Hello everyone, I'm Ian Gibson. I'm joined by a crazy crew of presumably criminals because it's my understanding we're gonna be pulling off a dragon heist. Let's go around the ring. First up, we've got Josh. Thank you for joining us. Are you excited? I am very excited. I'm gonna steal some dragons. Heck yeah. Karen, you're joining us. Thank you for joining. How excited are you? Hello, I am very excited to delve into this world today. Perfect. Uh, and Will, I see you laughing, giggling about God knows what. What's in that dirty mind of yours? Uh, it was just Karen's camera went to nightmare mode again right before we started. <laughs> um, no, I'm, I'm here. I'm ready to... Water is deep, I've heard. And dragons mm -hmm. are feisty, which rhymes with heisty, which is the plural of heist. This is why you're not hosting the stream. <laughs> okay? I'm just dungeon mastering the stream. <laughs> Thank you for the tease, though. Today, we are playing Waterdeep Dragon Heist. Ba -ba -ba -ba. This is... Now, everybody here has played Dungeons & Dragons before, right? Yes. yes. Okay. So, this is not our first D&D &D rodeo. But it is the first time that we have played together on stream. I'm very excited for this. Uh, let's just, you know, let's go ahead and get it started. I was thinking maybe we just each uh, introduce our characters, unless that's something planned that you have, um, Will. Yeah, I was going to have you... Well, it all depends. Um, actually, yeah, I'll have you guys introduce your characters to the stream, but not obviously not to each other. Yeah, that's uh, fine. It, so... Uh, you think we just we just say that one or two sentence description we have either read it or just that level of information? Yeah, just go around the whole one. Okay. All right. Okay, here we go. I am. I'm Bofus twice foot, a halfling bard with a folksy charm. Water deep is the lightest stop in my traveling tour across the land. Though my pockets are nearly empty, I plan to work with my old acquaintance Three Strings. Uh, let's go to Lazaria. Hello, my name is Lazari Laura, a traveling dwarf druid urchin, and I sell my wares in Waterdeep, where I've been here for the last few weeks. I frequent the local tavern, and I'm friendly with the owner and the barmaid, Dernan and Vani. Uh, so just, just for my own, it's Lazaria? How is it pronounced? La Lazari. 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 Lazarie. Yeah. Wait. Yes. Did I spell it right? L A S E R I A. E I E. I E. e. Of okay. All right. You know, actually, I think I can fix that real quick. Thanks. Cat, get out of here, cat. Okay, Josh, you want to go ahead? Sure. Hello, I am Rothfeck, a human warlock charlatan, and I've been spending my time running various swindling jobs across taverns in Waterdeep, and I've been doing this with the help of uh, my also friend three strings and uh but recently i've been looking for a bigger score as i really need to escape the city as i have some growing debts from some very dangerous people cool i'm excited this is gonna be great um so let me just fix this real quick uh but while i did do I, that do you want to just lay some I, ground rules what yeah did i pop something up on your screen when i click that mm -hmm. yes okay you can exit that i just didn't know what that button did okay um, you don't need to see it. Oh, so I can make you observers. Okay, that's cool. Um, so I think I'm going to hand it over to you, Will. Program. Yeah, that's fine. But before we actually get started while I'm fixing this overlay, do you want to lay down any, like, house rules or um, anything like that? No, I, I can go over the things I sent you guys. Uh, well, I should just say my style for anyone watching of DMing is uh, always story trumps rules. So, mm -hmm. like, if you, like, describe something in a really cool way, I might give you advantage or be like, oh, you succeed or stuff. Like, like I hate rule. I don't hate rules, but, like, it's easier to just say something one way or the other than to look through stuff uh, and try to figure out who exactly is right, because that's that's a thing that you do with, like, miniature games, which is what they're all about. Not uh, Dungeons right. & Dragons. It's all about the story. So, uh, yeah, so if you just, like, explain the way you do stuff or just add little bits of flourish, I enjoy that. Um, 
the ground rules, I think the stuff I sent you, which was uh, just adventure expectations, uh, go through this. Uh, this is an adventure of investigation and mystery, so always like look around for things, check stuff. There's a like a mystery. This whole thing is like it's more like Sherlock Holmes um, ish. So you're uh, kind of on the case. This this okay. heist. Um, uh, all your characters should have a solid motiv motivation to investigate mysteries with their companions. Sounds like you guys have pretty good reason to be in Waterdeep. Uh, this is a very urban adventure. You probably won't leave the city. Um, and you'll, it's also a quite long adventure, so you'll be here for many seasons uh, and like figuring stuff out. Um, all characters, you should try to... like. Don't try to squeeze yourself into every scene, but if you know you can offer something, feel free to offer it. Um, key skills, uh, deception, insight, all sorts of stuff. Investigation stuff. That's pretty much it. Um, let me... Okay. Um, just a quick question. I know this is... It's not quite a one-shot. So how many... Roughly how many sessions do you think this story will last? Probably maybe five or six. Okay. That sounds like fun. Um, yeah, it really depends. It's it's usually like a chapter per section, but it kind of gets into mix mm -hmm. and matching of chapters, so I really don't know how many we'll end up playing. Got it. Um, What's the speed run, like, world record? Of a D&D game? Of, oh, of yeah. this? Water deep, yeah. Uh, uh, I think it was three seconds. Um, yeah. The group did it in. We already messed up. A catch, wish, and have treasure. Yeah. I was really hoping to min-max this campaign, but... <laughs> yeah. Can you just be uh, full plate armor and a giant shield, and you just mm -hmm. crouch around? <laughs> All right, I have good news. I fixed the overlay. I also got rid of the cat that was sitting on top of my notebook and then trying nice. to sit on top of my keyboard. So I think we're ready to go. Are you guys ready? I'm going to hand it over to Will and just let you do your thing. Oh, real quick, we should probably give a shout-out to Foundry, right? Oh, yeah. So we're using Foundry Virtual Tabletop. Uh, it is a one-time payment. Um, I'm currently hosting it, and everyone else is connecting to it. Uh, you can also do it. There's a free cloud thing, but you have to do, like, port forward and everything, which I understand every time I have to do it, but not before I have to do it. Um, yeah, they're great. It's 50 bucks, I think it was. Uh, you can also... Uh, they have a Patreon, so you get, like, discounts if you do their Patreon. But it's really great. Uh, it's way better than Roll20. Um, and I like it so far, so... Yeah. yeah. Okay. Shout out. Nice. Okay. You guys ready? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Here we go. Boom. You can see this, right? No, we can't. No, you can't. Wow. It's pretty. Mm -hmm. Oh, now we can. Okay. Uh, just. All right. I I think I'm gonna get off of OBS because you guys have oh, been oh. very gargly. I'm okay. Okay. Uh, me for two hours. We'll quick, have your picture up. Quick audio check. There is background music, right? And I can hear it. Yes. I can turn it down if you. Oh, I think want I think we're to. good. I think we're okay. good. Okay. Cool. Let's, let's so, um, you all are in Waterdeep. It is currently winter in Waterdeep, which means there's not that many people out when it's heavy snow, a lot of snow drifts and stuff, and people just running back and forth to different inns and taverns just to get a drink um work kind of slows down trade slows down so the city's kind of in a sense of hibernation uh if you will uh let me just so brief guide to Waterdeep. um i sent you guys the volos uh how do you say that word in incredible i don't know how to say that word incredible incredible i don't actually know how to pronounce it children and Chidrian? I don't yeah. know. And um, so, And Chiridian? Is that oh, that, that sounds, sounds right. That, that sounds, sounds smart. Right. Karen's probably right. Anyway, so I that is right. Volo. Uh, he is a um, historian, human historian. He's written a lot of books. You guys might know Volo's Guide to Monsters. Yes. Mm -hmm. Which I have somewhere. But it is... Oh, I'll show this on the stream. Full of he's, monsters, he's which ugly. is an actual book in the world of D&D. 
Wow. So, mm -hmm. He has written real, that book. Uh, He's a real character. That's like Harry uh, Potter, those two weird books that she wrote about, like, Quidditch. Oh, uh, the Fantastic Beasts. And uh, one about how she doesn't support people. Uh, mm -hmm. Anyways, uh, so <laughs> Waterdeep, uh, I have this brief guide. I got it off a Reddit user. Uh, so I'm just going to go through it quick just so... I didn't even read that giant thing I sent you. I just sent it because it's flavor text. So, Waterdeep is a bustling, crowded, busy, mercantile city where coin is king and tolerance for people of all races and religion is high. Watered, watered Havians live life fast-paced despite fervent work ethic. They rarely miss an opportunity to celebrate with festivals often going all day and all night. In Waterdeep, wealth brings respect. Respect earns influence, and influence is power. So they are, you might have heard of the board game Warlord, or Warlord Lords of Waterdeep. Uh, the city is governed by masked lords. They're an anonymous group of representatives who, in turn, led by the open lord of Waterdeep. Um, the economy uh, is dominated by dozens of guilds. The law is the city watch. They enforce day to day law, uh, and there is a code legal. Uh, which is like a one-er, one-pager on uh, all the stuff you can and can't do in Waterdeep, which maybe you'll come across if you ask a city guard for it. Sorry, that was code um, code legal? Code legal. Got it. Uh, the city guard defends the city from outside threats along with the watchful order of the Magists and Protectors. Notable places, Yawning Portal Inn, which is Waterdeep's most famous inn, is named for the large well within its walls that leads into the dungeon Undermountain. It's a common destination for would-be heroes, and it's a common grave for would-be heroes. Uh, there's the walking statues. These are 100-foot-tall statues that are built as a defense mechanism for the city. Uh, they uh, lay dormant currently after a battle about 100 years ago. Uh, the city is divided into eight wards. Uh, I think I have a map somewhere if you guys need it. Um, blah, blah, blah. Uh, important, the current open lord of Waterdeep is a Lariel Silverhand. Uh, and I don't know if that's a man or a woman. Sorry, could you, a woman? could you spell that real quick? Uh, L-A-E-R-A-L. Here, actually, I can pop it up. And what was the last one? Silver. Silver Silverhand. Got it. Larry. Um, this is the current open lord. Uh, Dagult Never Ember is the previous one, who is still around, oh. uh, but he's just kind of hidden. Um, Volo Gadarm, we already talked about him. And Dernan runs the Yawning Portal. Uh, and then there's these different factions. There's the Emerald Enclave, the they oppose threats to the natural world. Force Grey or Grey Hands, they're elite adventurers who work for the government. There's the Harpers, who are a semi-secret organization dedicated to promoting good. Uh, the Lord's Alliance is a coalition of rulers from cities across Faerun, which is the world. Uh, Order of the Gauntlet, formed to destroy evil of the world at large. And then Zentarum is an affiliation of merchants and mercenaries known for their cutthroat tactics. Uh, and there's also uh, Xanathar's Guild, which is more of like an underground organization. Oh, okay. Okay, so that is that. And then, just to preface us, these are three facts to, like, lead us right into, like, these things have mm -hmm. uh, kind of happened in society recently. So it's been five years since the end of the War of the Dragon Queen. So there's numerous villages, towns, cities, and lost, uh, that, and cities that have lost tremendous amounts of coin when they were raided by the Cult of the Dragon. Uh, mm -hmm. So most of these cities haven't recovered. Uh, due to his negligence and preferential treatment of Neverwinter, Lord Degult, Never Ember, lost his seat as the open lord of Waterdeep to L'Oreal Silverhand, which is spelled differently in this one. Uh, crime is on the rise. Numerous criminal factions in Waterdeep appear more active, going so far as to fight one another in the streets. In response, the High Wizard of Waterdeep, Vajra Blackstaff Safahar, uh, has activated her independent enforcers, Force Grey and the Grey. What was her title? Uh, she is the High Wizard of Waterdeep. Okay. And Force Grey. Yep. 
Okay. So, let me... A, a, a quick stupid question. Um, gray. Is that with an A gray. or an E? Um, you know, that's not a stupid question. It uh, looks like both. Oh. Yeah, it is both. <laughs> so Fourth it's... gray with an E and then gray hands with, a, a, I'm with gonna, an A. I'm going to spell it G-R-A-E-Y. There you go. Gray. Um, okay. This... Sorry, I'm just, I feel like the first session I take a lot of notes and then I just never take notes again because that's just yeah, what I do. I wonder if, so this document that you showed us, I wonder if I have access to it now. You oh, I do. Should? Under yeah. under the book, journal made, entries. Yeah, I made it act. That's great. Access for you. I didn't need to take all these stupid notes now. God. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, okay, so we're at the yawning portal. Um, did it bump you guys over here? No. It's, it's, it's loading. loading. Oh, it's loading. Okay. I want to make sure it's working. Um, so uh, while it's loading, uh, you guys, I know two of you are here to meet. Uh, you're both friends with three strings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, Karen, you didn't have any affiliation, correct? Uh, I said I was just friendly with the... Uh, tavern owner and barmaid, but not not really anything significant. Gotcha. Okay. Bonnie and Durnham. Um, so feel free to set yourselves at a table. Do we already? Uh, you can either know each other, or should we play um, that through? Yeah, I was gonna assume you guys are sitting. You don't know each other, but you're sitting. They sat you at the same table, so you're okay. at least at a table together and you've been chatting for the past maybe half an hour um mostly because yeah. you heard, you know yawning portal is a great place to come to yeah. to gotcha. find people um all sorts of stuff so we're not on here right you're not on here so you can drag your player character from how, the thing how do i pan down because i can zoom in and out but i can't uh, hold, hold, right hold right click uh, hold it Wait, how do I drag my character? Uh, I can't. Uh, I think you might have to introduce it and then no, we can manipulate okay, it. Well, I'm going to put you guys at this table here. Gotcha. Of yeah. course. Cool. Wait, who? Who's that? Yeah, I can't. <gasps> oh, that's you. On laptop. That's Rolltech. Oh, you can't on the laptop? Is it, is it Rolltech or Rolltech? Can, can you command uh, click Rolltech? Rolltech. Oh, she, I, you know, you may be on the wrong, you gotta, I think you may be on the wrong tool. Well, no, it should work with all tools. I've got the little person and the little square. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you hold down, be able to click and hold, hold down, right click and drag. Oh, you're on a Mac. I'm on a touch pad. Yeah. Hold command and click is right click. Is that working? Yeah, but then it just drags a distance. Oh, oh, yeah, you're... I think you're measuring right now. Yeah. Yeah, make sure you're clicked on the select token thing. On, like, have, the square part, because yeah, it's on... Yeah, I have the square selected and then the little person icon selected. Huh. Only grab we're... a mouse. Oh, it's because you're... It's, con like, when you control left-click. Oh, uh, that. that why? Okay. Um, yeah, you want me to bring, you want to come get a mouse? Oh, that's yeah. a nice, that's a nice shortcut, just doing the control. That is a nice shortcut. Thanks for figuring that out. <laughs> um, yeah, so okay. this, so this um, makes sense. I, I was just going to say, I think a good intro is, I'm looking for three strings, because I just got to town, and I, I've been told that, roll, roll, tech, roll, is it thek? Thek or tech? Tech? Uh, thek. Roll thek. I've been told that roll yep. thek knows him. So I think that's I think that's how we got introduced in a way. Yeah, or we're being introduced now by yeah. Him. Yeah, that works. Okay. It's annoying with a microphone directly in front of where I want to read from. <laughs> just uh, um, just do what I did. You put put the mic down like at your sternum and turn the gain up. Um, it doesn't work on my chair. Okay, that's a little bit better. Okay, so you are in 
the yawning is Karen back. Yes. Okay, you're in the yawning portal. It is an in. You know three. Uh, Ian is here to talk to three strings. Um, I, I'm trying to Bofus. I'm trying to use names. Rolthek is here. He also knows three strings, but you're not here particularly to talk to three strings. You're just hanging out and swindling people. Yeah. Um, and then Lazare. Lazare? Lazare. Lazare. Uh, you are just, you know Bonnie Durham, you're just hanging out here. Anyways, you're all seated together, so if you just want to do what people do seated at a table together, I know it's hard to imagine. Got it. Times, tell me, tell me, Rothek, how do you know three strings? Oh, me and three strings have been uh, playing games together for quite a while now. Um, uh, you're, would you say you're a good friend of three strings? Oh, I wouldn't say good friend, but... He's a fellow performer, and we spent the summer traveling around, just kind of sharing the touring path, so they say, for a bit. But we got along well enough for tour, I'd say that. Not the best of friends, but not enemies. Never quite at each other's throats, but never holding hands either, you know. <laughs> well, you seem, you seem respectful enough, enough but uh, I'll let you in on our little game. See, I like to play cards. Well, the problem is I don't like to lose. Ooh. So, me and Three Strings have a have a little game where he'll play a song, and uh, throughout the song he'll be giving me hints as to what my opponents are holding. Oh, that's a smart one. I tell you what, I'm not much a fan for uh, tricks such as these, but I won't stand in the way because I am a fan of entertainment. So you carry on your game. I'll keep your secret safe. If you don't mind, I'd just like a little bit of a giggle while I watch. Of course. Tell me, Lazary, do you know Three Strings? Uh, I've heard of the name. I believe he bought for me last week a potion of growth. He told me he was having some difficulty with the maidens Ooh. in the area. <laughs> that does sound like Three Strings. <laughs> yeah. Although I think it's more difficulty with the tongue than it is the loins. <laughs> <laughs> You can't pick them up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the yeah. poor fellow, you know, he doesn't have much charm with the ladies. No, He's no. Big of course not, of course not. <laughs> oh. That was pretty good. Okay, so um, you guys are sitting around a sturdy wooden table lit by bright burning candle littered with plates of cleared food and half-drained tankard. Uh, the sounds of gamblers yelling and drunken adventurers singing bawdy songs. Bawdy songs nearly drown out the off-key strumming of a y young bard three tables over, whom you know as three strings. Uh, when all of a sudden, noise is eclipsed by a shout. Ya pig! You're killing me mates, does ya? Then a seven-foot-tall half-orc is hit by a wild swinging punch from a male human whose shaved head is covered with eye-shaped tattoos. Four other humans stand behind him, ready to jump into the fray. The half-orc cracks her knuckles, roars, and leaps at the tattooed figure. But before you see if any blood is drawn, a crowd of spectators clusters around the brawl. What do you do? Oh, boy. Oh, would you look at the eyes on that fella? I wonder what they're fighting about. This hardly seems like a fair fight. To be honest, folks, I don't have a uh, stake in either party, but I don't mind seeing a good brawl. Maybe we get closer? Oh, I'm definitely going closer to that table they were playing games at. Yes, perhaps I can sell them some potions of healing afterwards. <laughs> yes, yes. If the, if one of them survives. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to make my way if I can to the front of the the ring of crowd and just kind of see what's going on. Okay, so you see the half orc is holding down the um, uh, the guy underneath her, the shaved head with the tattoos, and is just beating his face a bunch. Okay, is it like, is it a pretty one-sided fight at this point? Uh, you can tell the four others are are getting ready to tackle her off. Of him. Okay, then I just say real quick, I just say, oh come on now, make it a fair one. 
Um, yeah. Okay. So, is anyone else doing anything, or are you letting this play out? Um, I'm, I'm hiding under the table, but I'm kind of watching. Okay. I'm going over to their table and then just kind of pocketing some of their coin that they had laid there. Yeah, they're super distracted, so that's, that's fine with me. Um, perfect. So uh, you let them be. Um, you notice the half orc feeding this guy, and the guy just drops unconscious. Uh, she gets up and starts walking away back to her table, and the four guys run over and pick up the guy on the ground. And uh, Dernan, the proprietor, he's the one behind the bar. He uh, looks over at the uh, guys and says, "Out!" And so all five of them, or four of them, carrying the fifth, uh, march out of the bar. Lazari, looks like here's your chance for a little bit of potion. Oh yes. So I head over, and actually, before I go to them, I actually want to talk to Dernan first. Okay. Hi, Dernan. How are you doing? Hi, what, me was, what was what was all that about? Uh, uh, that was some of those Xanthar guild pugs. Thugs is the word, not pugs. Uh, beating up one of the uh, Yarga, one of my clients, patrons. Oh, geez. Sounds like they can use some potions. I, uh, or some good ale. Unless you're trying to make a sale there, Lazari. Ah, you know me. Just need to pocket a little bit of coin, but it'll come right back to you. Uh, it always does here at the Awning Portal. All uh, right, quick question: When he said Xanthar Guild thugs, who was who was he referring to? Because it was it was a big orc and four humans. Is that right? It was a big orc and five humans. The orc was ta- was beating one human on the ground. Okay, and then who was who was the Xanthar thug? The, they were the Xanthar guild thugs. The humans? Everyone but the orc. Yeah. The human. And the orc was just a orc. Got it. Half Got orc. it. Okay, sorry. I just didn't understand. Okay. Um, cool. So as the... All right, did you want to talk more, Karen? Uh, no. Okay. I, so I, I did want to go over and talk to her at a certain point. Okay. So if... As you stand up to maybe head over to talk to her, mm-hmm. um, shouts of alarm suddenly ring out as a hulking creature climbs up out of the shaft in the middle of the tap room. A monster with warty green skin, a tangled nest of wiry black hair, a long carrot-shaped nose, and bloodshot eyes. As it bars its yellow teeth and howls, you can see that a half a dozen bat-like creatures are attached to its body, with three more circling above it like flies. Everyone in the tavern reacts to a fear, except for the barkeeper, Dernan, who shouts, Troll! In the dungeon. Um, so a giant troll has now jumped, or climbed up, mm-hmm. out of the... You just put yourself underneath the troll. <laughs> oh, is that it? I was just <laughs> imagining I was walking over. That's the troll. And then there's three... Sturges flying around it. The other Sturges are attached to him, drinking his blood. Mm-hmm. Um, the troll... Uh, actually, no. I'll... Uh, what? We roll initiative here? That's probably a thing we do. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna roll initiative. I think I can make an angle. Let me put you... I don't know if that actually... Okay, grab the three of you and put you in an encounter. Oh, uh, just a real quick thing. When you roll, not necessarily on initiative, but when you roll, the stream can't necessarily see what you roll. So just try and say it out loud what you roll. Gotcha. Okay, I think I'm good. Let me roll, sorry. Uh, you guys rolled initiative? Yes. I'm I rolled, rolled in one four. second. Uh, so if you uh, click on the... Up on me. Can you guys click okay, on the combat go. tracker? Do you see that? Where? Um, where is that? At the top. Next to... Uh, you might not be able to see it. I, I don't know what you guys can oh, see. Oh, combat here. tracker? Yeah, I can yeah. see that. And oh. you can roll uh, for... 
initiative oh, sorry, here, or I can change it if you already rolled. Yeah, yeah because... I rolled. Go ahead. I'm sorry, right. I need to do. I didn't do it right. Minus one. Yeah, so I I already rolled. I rolled one. a nine. <gasps> okay, you rolled a nine. Yeah. And I rolled a four. I rolled a one. Jeez, rolling great here, guys. We're all gonna die. And four. Okay, cool. So the this sturge is up first. Uh, bring up his character sheet or his hip hit sheet. Okay, so he is going to let's see, ten feet. One. 10, gonna fly here. And he's going to do blood drain mm -hmm. on you. Which is. Sorry. What is happening? Why is it doing that? I don't know. It's kind of weird. There we go. Attack. So that's an 18 against you, Josh. Oh, that will hit. Okay, and then he's gonna. Uh, that's 12 points of damage. Are you dead? Uh, <laughs> four <kidding>. damage. <laughs> oh, jeez, that's so okay. pretty bad. <laughs> yeah. Still not great. Okay, um, next up is the other Sturge, who's gonna go. Uh, one, two, there. And then it is Bofus, your turn. Oh, okay. I am going to... I'm going to cast... Wait, sorry. Let me... Uh, I'm going to try and cast Sleep. Let me just read something real quick. Okay, so... Okay, all right. I'm going to try and cast Sleep. So... Okay. The way I'm going to do this... Troll. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get fancy with it. Here we go. All right, so it's within a 20-foot radius. So I think it's... Let me just see if I can... Let me cast it on that Sturge. That Sturge? Got yeah, is that... Who is this? That's nobody, right? That's the orc. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay, that's that person. Okay, so the way it says is... Uh, the spell sends creatures into a magical slumber. Roll 5d8. The total is how many hit points of creatures this spell can affect. Creatures within a 20 foot of a 20 feet of a point you choose within range are affected in ascending order of their current hit points. Um, each creature affected by the spell falls unconscious until the spell ends. I, I don't think there's a save. Uh, there is not. It's just based on their hit points. Yeah. So I'm gonna okay. roll 5d8. Ready? Do it. 13. So 13. 13. So if, if it's more than their hit points? No. Well, so you, you start with the person who has the lowest hit points. Yeah. Then they fall asleep, and then whatever's remaining goes to the next person. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. So I'm hoping starting the Sturges with, uh, are low. Starting, starting with the lowest, you said? Ascending. Starting with the lowest, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that Sturge falls asleep. I'm at six, if that matters. Um, it, it may. Because so I'm in a circle, right? Yeah, so he's gonna fall asleep and he's gonna fall deck down the portal. Yeah. So he's gonna be gone. <laughs> um, then this third. So we're at um, eleven. Oh, sorry. I just noticed. Yeah. So I, that's the spell description. When I hit cast it beyond, it throws it over here. Nice. Okay, so that's minus two hit points to eleven. Then this third falls asleep and hits the ground. <laughs> so he is now asleep. Um, I wonder if I can... Oh, I can. I can assign him a sleep. Nice. So that's down to nine. So then I think that would... Oh, what about the Sturge? Josh. Oh, yes. that's Sturge. You're right. So that's seven. <laughs> still still got it. Uh, let me just check Yarga, because she's technically... Yeah. Half in, but no, she's higher. So you fall asleep, okay. Josh. Uh, so, which you should be able to. Add. Yeah, I can do that. Effect. Yeah. Uh, but it is one sturge down, and then the troll does not fall asleep. 
Okay, so this lasts for one minute, which if we're doing six second rounds should be 10 rounds, right? Yeah. 10 rounds. Or until the, something takes damage or something wakes it up. Yes. Okay. Um, cool. So next up is uh, Dernan. So he's going to... Two seconds. Do you think you got everything ready? <laughs> oh. Let's rip the page out of my book. Thirty feet. Okay. So he's gonna go. Uh, I would say a bar is probably difficult terrain, right? So that's. Is that twice, Josh? Uh, difficult is just twice, twice as much. So, like, you could say it takes them five extra feet to get on top of the bar. Gotcha. So that's 10, 15, 20. Is he, is he moving to retreat or moving to fight? He's moving to fight. He drew okay, a good. giant broadsword. Okay, good. Um, okay, so Dernan runs his 30 feet and is trying to look at who he's going to attack. He can't reach anyone, so he's waiting. Uh, next up, uh, it was both this, and now it is the troll. Troll time, baby. Uh, the troll is going to ignore sleeping little... Uh, Aww. Sleeping little... Oh, man, I can't remember names. Rothek. Rothek. I got it. What are you talking about? I remember that. Sleeping little Rothek, he's going to ignore, so he's going to stomp, stomp, stomp. One, two, over here to Dernan. And then he's going to beat and use his big old claws to attack him. It's going to be a normal roll. That's going to be a 13 against Dernan, and that is a miss. Good boy. Uh, so he's going to miss, and then it's going to move. So he's going to, like, lumber over. He's going to step over the little fainted Sturge. Uh, sweep down, and he's going to smash the table next to Dernan and miss him completely. Uh, so then we're going to move on to Rolthek, who is asleep. Do you do anything while you're asleep? Uh, I don't believe so. You just keep slapping. Me, right? Okay. Yeah. So you are asleep nicely, and then... The next Safe is this Sturge, which I believe is the sleeping one. Why is this? Oh, because... Oh, I deleted it. That's yeah, you delete. Yeah. So you have three in the order, but there's really only two left. Oh, I just deleted the troll. Okay. Oh, I can... Rem oh, I didn't hit... There's a little death icon. Nice. Okay, Yagra is next. So she's going to jump, leap over the table and do a strike on the troll with her. She has a short sword. Oh, yeah, that's what I do. Short sword is... Nine. Oh, what am I doing? 20. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. I was rolling damage. Wow, still suck. That was a terrible roll. That was a two plus a six is an eight. She's going to miss. Yeah, Gosh darn it, Yager. She screams in fury. And it's Lazary. All right, uh, just a question. What does it mean if it says... My hit is plus one, but then the damage type is 1d6 minus one. So you roll the hit, and then when you roll damage, you subtract one from the damage. Okay. All right. So I um, I pull out my scimitar and shield, and I hop up on the bar stool and jump forward, slashing at the troll. 
at the troll? Yes. Okay. The, um, it, with the scimitar, I think it's uh, finesse, so it might be using her strength when it should be using her dex. That might be why. Uh, it says martial finesse light. What's your like strength and what's your dex? Strength and dex are both nine. Oh, okay. Never mind. Okay, so yeah, I'm gonna say you do that because you're tiny and you can jump far. Um, so roll the d20 for me with your bonus, whatever it is. D20, you said? What was your roll to hit? It's uh, 1d6 minus 1. No, that's the damage. Oh. Uh, it should be... For what? It should be a d20 with your modifier. For, you said strength or dex, right? Josh? Yeah. Yeah, which are both nine, so I think it's proficiency is two, so it'd be plus one, right? This is minus one plus two. Mm, minus one plus yeah, yeah. So roll D twenty plus one. Okay, so we've got seven, so it'll be eight. Eight. Um on the troll is a miss. But it looked cool. <laughs> so I'm gonna stick you right here. Cause you leapt forward. Um, next up on the thing is Sturges are both asleep. So it's back to Durnan. Uh, and he is going to swing his broadsword at the big old troll. So he's going to roll 20 plus 4. And he's going to... Why is everyone rolling like absolute poop? And he's going to miss. And he's going to smash into the table. His broadsword lodged into the table that the troll hit when it missed him. Uh, so next up is Bofus, twice uh, put. So real quick, I I looked at my unarmed strike. And my to hit is plus one. But my damage is zero. <laughs> because an unarmed <laughs> strike does one plus your strength modifier, which is negative one. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, okay. So anyways, so I, I want to do two things if I can this turn. One is I want to go over and I want to wake up Rolfek. And the other thing I want to do is pick up the Sturge next to him and throw it into the well. Um, okay. I, I, can, I can do both those. Okay, so I want to, I'm going to, well, let me do this first. So 5, 10, 15... Is that close enough to wake up Roltec? Uh, yeah, I'll give you the diagonal on it. Okay, all right. I'm going to wake up Roltec. I mean, I, I guess I should shake him awake. Yeah. And then uh, I want to... I want to pick up that Sturge. Um, so how do you want me to do this? Uh, just roll a strength check. Okay. I rolled a 10. Um, yeah, so you grab him and you toss him into the well. Yes! Yes! Um, and then as I have some bonus actions. Okay. Here we go. I'm going to do Bardic Inspiration. So as a... I'll, I'll display it here. So as a bonus action, I can inspire other people. I give them an inspiration um, within 60 feet of me. I'm just going to give it to Rolthek. He gains an inspiration die, 1d6. And then for 10 minutes, the creature can add it to one ability check, attack roll, or saving throw. And I get three of those before a long rest. So I'm going to say to Rolthek, I'm going to say like, sorry about the sleep, friend, but things got a little bit hairy there. But it's time for you to join the fight. As long as that needle's out of my arm, I'm happy. <laughs> All right, so now you got you basically have a 1d6 inspiration die that you can use within the next mm -hmm. 10 minutes. Okay, that's my okay. turn. Okay, so next up is the troll, I think, because he got removed, so I had to re-add him. Um, troll is going to... Let me just check. He's going to multi-attack. Oh my goodness. So he's going to make two bites, no, one bite and two claws. So he's going to try to bite Durnum. Uh, troll bite. Why won't it let 
means. Oh, just oh, bite auto hits. That's why. Why is it? Oh, it's being bad now. Okay. Two seconds. So he bites Durnum. I just don't know what the damage is. So I'm just gonna roll a d4. Some of these things like say that they're programmed, but when you click on them, they certainly are not. Okay, so he's gonna bite into Durnum and strike for four hit points. Durnum has And then he's going to claw at uh, Yagar. Yagar? I think that's her name. Yagra. Yagra is going to attack Yag. Why is. Yeah, this stuff's not working for me now. Are you. Is, like, I think it says that the Sturge is the current turn. If you look at the, the order. So are you not advancing the turn? Oh, uh, is that what I messed up? Yeah. That's probably why it's blocking you from certain actions. Mm. <laughs> Does it still say the Sturge is current turn? No, it says no, Troll. It says Troll. Okay, so now it's a Troll. Maybe, I, oh, maybe I'm clicked on an old version of the Troll. Glad well, we're figuring this all out together. Or is that troll in an issue oh, different no. from the troll? That's... No, yeah, I think it was. I, I had the old one up that I killed. Mm -hmm. That's why it wasn't working. Okay, so now I can roll a nine, and he's going to miss Yagra. And then he's going to attack you, Karen, with a claw. And what is your... Ooh. Um, so, sorry, just to, just to point out, that's a red eight because he rolled a natural one. Oh, he did roll a natural one. I was about to ask why it was red. So he is going to completely miss you, Karen. Okay. He's going to swing, and he's going to stumble backwards and step on this other Sturge and kill it. <laughs> yes! It's good stuff. Um, so let me just kill this other Sturge. Okay, and next up is Rolthek. Come up. Uh, I'm going to stand up from my slumber. Big uh, and look around, see the troll still there. Uh, and I'm going to move 5, 10, 15, I think. Uh, and I'm going to cast Distant Whispers. Which means mm -hmm. that I, I'm going to whisper a discordant melody that only one creature of your choice can hear, racking it with terrible pain. Uh, so I'm just gonna, under my breath, start whispering nonchalantly, uh, your mother never loved you. <gasps> that is so cruel. It is very Ooh. cruel. Uh, so he makes a wisdom saving throw. And on a failed save, he takes 3d6 psychic damage and must use his reaction to move as far uh, or as far as its speed will allow away from me. Yeah. Uh, so he rolled a six. I'll fail, so I'll roll 3d6. Is there a way to easily do a roll? Oh, yeah, there is. Uh -oh. oh, there's like a cheat button? Yeah. yeah, if you click on wisdom on your like character sheet, it does ability check or saving throw. Nice. Uh, so he'll take six psychic damage and must use his uh, reaction to move as far as his speed will allow away from me. I tell him to be gone. Okay, so that's... He won't, like, injure himself while doing that, but... Two. Four. Six. Okay, he's all the way over there now. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's your turn? Yep, that'll be my turn. Awesome. Uh, next up is Yagra. So she's going to run over. Everyone's measuring right now. Uh -huh. <laughs> I just want to make it's sure. It's the you all measuring. 
Uh, Yagra is going to use her long sword to cleave into his tasty flesh. She's going to attack. She's going to roll an 11, which is a miss. Come on, Yagra. You're strong, Fist. You beat up that guy. Uh, and she's going to be very sad about missing. And so next up is Lazary. It is your turn. All right. Uh, I am small enough to run under the table, so I'm going to head straight for the troll <laughs> running under the table so he can't really see me too well. Okay. You can move your character. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. There you go. And slash at him with my scimitar. Awesome. Roll, uh, roll for a hit. Eighteen. Wow, that's a hit. Now roll for damage. Four damage. So you kind of run under the table. You guys see this from far away. Uh, and she has this scimitar out. And she just runs up and then slashes for it. And like slices open both of the troll's shins. Which is like blood, black blood oozing down his shins now. Nice. Um, so that was four damage. Awesome. Does it cripple him? Uh, he is not crippled. But there's a lot of blood on the ground, so it could eventually get slippery or perhaps even sticky. Um, next up, to back to the hard. top of the list is uh, Dernan, who is going to laugh at seeing the comedic uh, little... What are you carrying? Are you a dwarf. half... You're a dwarf. The little dwarf run over and slash this guy. <laughs> so he's going to run 5, 10, 15, 20... 25, 30 to the edge of the portal, and he's going to swing his long sword. To the great big arc. He's going to swing it down onto this guy and roll an 8 and completely miss. <sighs> because he was laughing too hard. Because he was laughing too hard. You slipped on the blood. God, I hate these people. Okay, uh, so moving on, it's Bofus' turn. Okay, so um, I think what I want to do is I want to grab a glass off this table. Okay. Oh, you know what? If I throw it at the troll... Well, the troll has partial cover. Or, well, it's up to you. If I, if I throw it from where I am. You might hit uh, one of no, us. the troll doesn't have any cover. No cover? Okay. Or you might hit Dernan. Yeah, you could hit Dernan, but the troll's much taller than him. Uh, okay, so you're aiming high. So I think I want to grab a glass off the table and throw it at him, which I think is just a attack roll plus dexterity, right? Yeah, and then damage is just a d4. Okay, all right. So I'm basically just rolling a dexterity check. Then. That's a twenty-two. Um, it's a twenty-two. And then, and then, what did you say? Damage was d4. Okay. Oh yeah, that hits. Whoa, well, that's okay. four. Four damage, four damage right. to the You're really troll. whittling them down. Only six hundred more damage to go. <laughs> hmm? That's why it's uh -huh. five sessions. Got it. That's why D and D's great. Um. Oh, and just real quick, let me just check if I want to do anything else with my bonus actions. Bonus. <laughs> um, what? you know, I think I do want to do. No, I think I'm okay. I'm okay. okay. I'm good. Next up is the troll, and once again, multi-attack. He is going to bite Dernan. Gonna attack. Ooh, that's oh. a hit. Oof. Eight damage on Dernan. That's crazy. Absolutely crazy. And then he's going to swipe at Yagra. That's going to be a claw, big hulking claw crashing down. 16 on Yagra mm. is a hit. That's going to do 
Wait, did I hit the right button? Oh man, that was 15 damage. Yikes. Boy howdy. She's pretty hurt. Uh, and the claw is also going to hit Karen. Oh. 17. Lazary? Hits you. Lazary? Uh, sorry, Lazary. There is no Karen here. Uh, 17 hits here, your armor. Uh, I also have my shield up. This okay, whole that's the time. Plus two. I think. What's your armor class? Uh, armor class is 11. Okay, so that 17 is, gonna... is uh, plus two. Yeah, so that's gonna hit. I'm gonna roll for damage here. You're gonna take 11 damage. That's a lot. That is a lot. My hit points are 13. Oh, oh that's good. Oh, you're that's, fine. That's close. That was really close. That's a little close, though. This is, they say this is, this is the hardest D&D &D is at level one or level two because your hit points are so low by Does default. Does it break my shield? No, your shield's fine. But it smashes the shield back into your face causing you to lose 11 hit points. Man. Okay, next up is Rolthek. Um. Yeah, I'm going to go over here and hop on top of the bar so I can get a better angle on things. Mm -hmm. I'm going to shoot an Eldritch Blast at the troll. Gotcha. Uh, and I'm going to use my Bardic Inspiration to add a d6 to that. Wow, wow, that is a hit. Yeah. Be D10 damage. Four uh, force damage. Four as force it, damage. As I summon a uh, swirling mist of purple energy and shoot it out, aiming at his uh, at his chest. Wow, that sounds very erotic. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Goes straight into him. Straight oh, through him. Yeah. <laughs> okay, next up is Yagra. She's gonna once again try her longsword. Once again, probably gonna miss. Oh, oh, what what happens when you uh, tie? Uh, tie goes to the attacker. Nice. So she hits. Oh Wait, it's crit fail. Or that, no, no, that's. Yeah, it's attack that's roll. not damage. Oh, I did attack roll. Sorry. Nice. That's my fault. So that's six damage. Hey, I was really confused for a second. Okay. Yagra. And next up is Lazary Laura. Alright. Can I cast a spell? I have two prepared. I think you mean may you cast a spell. May I cast a spell? <laughs> Yes, you, you can. you're telling me what you're doing. Not... All right, I want to cast Cure Wounds on myself. Oh, selfish. Yeah, go for it. Cure Any those wounds. Any creature ones. you touch regains a number of hit points equal to 1d8 plus your spellcasting ability modifier. Okay, so touch yourself. Touch so that's myself. 1d8 plus what's your spellcasting ability as a druid? The wisdom. wisdom. Yeah. So, so 1d8 plus 12. your modifier. Oh, modifier is plus one. For okay. wisdom? Yeah. Okay, so roll. Seven. So you get seven from one. So just update your character sheet. Plus okay. seven. And uh, can I back up a little bit on the table? I forgot to mention that. Uh, yeah. Well, you'll, right, so you'll take opportunity attack, right? Yeah, I backed up under the... I'm hiding under the table. Uh, let's that. Um, so he's going to take an attack of opportunity on you. As you're on backing me? up. Yeah. But he's okay, just going to so try I'm, to bite you. I have nine right now. One second. All right. 
He's gonna try to bite me. Yeah. Uh, so what is that? That's gonna be a 22. <laughs> against what? Against your armor class. Oh, 11. Yeah, okay. So I'm gonna roll for damage. So that's seven damage. So it just undid whatever I had just <laughs> yeah. done. But you're still alive. Yeah. yeah, now you're not dead. So, so the thing so he is, he stopped me in the middle of in the middle of healing myself. He got me. Well, no. So, the, so the thing is, if you're next to somebody and you move away from them, you give them a free opportunity to attack you. Yeah. Unless you disengage, yeah. which is uh, you have to spend your your uh, action doing that. Um. Okay. So that's your turn, Karen. <sighs> yes. Okay. So Dernan is up. Uh, he's not laughing this time. He's going to swing. Why? Why is this not? Uh, he's going to swing. Oh, there he is. His big old longsword at the big old troll. Gosh darn it, you idiot. And he's going to miss. He's literally the worst. I hate this man. Uh, and so it's going to go to the troll. Oh, no, it's not going to go to Troll. It's going to go to Bofus. Twice foot. I am Bofus twice foot. Um, I'm going to move... Twice the foot, double the fall. I'm going to move in front of Lazary. It's my full 25. And I'm going to use Healing Word on Lazary. So let me do that. Did it also roll for me? No, I just put it there. Oh, no, it did. Yeah, so at the bottom of the first one, it says healing six. Okay. So, uh, Lazary, you get six HP, and I say, Don't worry, friend, you took two heavy hits there, but I'll help you out. Um, and that is... Oh, sorry, that's my... that's So, healing word is a bonus action. So, I still have my main action. So, I am going to grab another glass off this table. <laughs> And I'm going to check it at the, the troll again. So let me roll for Do that. It. That is a 12 against his AC. 12 against his AC? That's going to miss. Okay. All right. That's my turn. Okay. Next up is the troll. Troll is going to slash at Dernan. Claw time, baby. And he's gonna miss, and then he's gonna try to claw at Dernan again. And he's going to miss, and then he's gonna try to bite Dernan, because he's so mad. And he's gonna bite him right on his shoulder. Oh. Eat his flesh. Oh. For nine damage. Jeez. He's chewing his delicious flesh. Um, yeah, the troll is very happy right now. Uh, and it's gonna be Rolthek's turn. Uh, it's gonna move over a little bit. I get a shout out. Durnan, you need to hire some extra guards for, for this place and shoot another Elgis Blast targeting <laughs> the troll. Uh, uh, I think that's a crit. Nice. Nice. So, uh, crit, uh, just max damage. Oh, it's max damage? Uh, is that what we used in, to do? What in, did we used to do? Well, in 5th edition, a crit is you roll, you double the amount of dice you roll. Yeah, what do you guys like do? The... Max damage or double? Double the roll. I, th I think I would lean towards double the roll, because that, that could yeah. potentially get you more. Okay, let's do double I, the roll. I think that's how it's written in the book, but I'm not sure. I can, I've got the book here, I can double check. So 2d10 would be 14 force damage. 14 force damage? This poor troll, he's looking real woozy. Force like, of the woo. death. Um, and next up is Yagra. And she's gonna take out her sword. And she's going to 
put it where the sun don't shine. Roll. Attack. She's gonna miss. So that's great. She missed. Uh, so now it's Lazarus' turn. Um, yes, so we, we have it correct. It's it's basically you roll the damage die twice, mm -hmm. but then the Glad modifiers. Your modifier once. Yeah. yeah, exactly. All right. All right, so I am going to uh, cast again Cure Wounds on myself. Okay. Uh... Do I have to roll a uh, d20? To do cure wounds? No, I think it's an auto. Okay, just one d8. Yeah. Just one d8 plus your spell casting ability modifier. Just wisdom, so plus one. Music could be good. Mm -hmm. Three. Perfect for battle. What is that stuff? Storm is brewing. Went down at two and now I'm at five. Okay, and I'm just gonna chill under the table here. Okay. Uh, you changed your stuff in the sheet? Yes. Cool. Uh, so back to the top with Durnan. He's gonna summon all the might he can. And absolutely not roll. Well, that's a lot of might. This is why this guy runs a tavern. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh boy. Oh, that's so annoying. Okay, so he's gonna miss. Uh, he does technically have a multi attack, but I haven't been using it, so I'm not gonna use it. Okay. Wow, he has a multi attack of four. <laughs> that's pretty good. Wow. Um, so I'm gonna move uh, down to Bofus. Thanks for the sub, Ocean Man. Um, Thank you, stranger. DM, I want to get a little bit creative. I I want to go like this, get on top Do of the it. table, and then jump stab the troll with my rapier. Okay, so you, I want you to make a athletic, athletic acrobatics check to get on the table. To get on the table and to jump, and then roll to hit. Okay, so let me do seven to get on the table and jump. Uh, so you <laughs> you get up on the table, but you slip on a plate. Okay. And you fall uh, next to the troll. So you can still attack, but you don't do your cool. Move. Okay, got it. But I'm still on my feet. You're still on your feet. You slip. You kind of, you know when you like slip down a oh, stair and you land yeah. on the next stair? Okay, I like that. that. Okay, but here's the thing. Don't I get something because I'm... Uh, what's it called? Flanking? Flanking? What's flanking? Uh, oh, yeah. Is it flanking? You, yeah, flanking is advantage, but you can choose if you, like... You can give advantage for wherever you want, like if you think they're in a habitatious position. Do I get advantage for this, since I'm... Yeah, I'll give you it. Uh, actually, no, I won't, because you messed up your little... Your little athletics check. You're so upset. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's... I, I've, the whole game I was trying to get into flanking, and then you just let me get in there. <laughs> so I'm, I'm still happy. All right, so I'm gonna attack my rip here. Here we go. That is a, oh no, sorry, that's damage. Oh no, that's, that's, so that's both, doing, yeah. it's both. So it's a 21 to hit for five damage. Yep. Yep, yep, and yep. Okay. Uh, this troll is just a heaping mass of blood dripping out of him. And he's like barely conscious. And he's oh, like, wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. So then I say, he's almost gone, folks. Just give him a shove. So it's the troll's turn. And oh, out of one uh, desperate act, uh, he's going to try to regenerate. Yowzus. Um. So he's gonna regenerate. You all see that? Public yep. Yeah, what, what is it? Um, so he's gained 10 health. 
Okay. Forget to hide things. Uh, so that was his turn, and now it is roll thick. Um, like roll thick, am I right? Yeah. <laughs> how is how is everyone looking? How's Yagra looking? Uh, Yagra, uh, she's down a little bit, but she's, they're, they're all fine. They're in no immediate danger. Same with okay. In that case, I'm going to continuing to barrage this troll with Eldritch Blast. Yeah, blast him. Then I started blasting. Then I started blasting. 14 to hit. 14 to hit is a miss. I'll miss. I go wide and, uh, Ooh. sink into the opposite wall. Yeah, it smashes and burns a nice eldritch. It's your, actually your signature in eldritch mm -hmm. on the wall. Which uh, is so, one of those cool S's. Yeah, it's just one that's of those cool S's. <laughs> that's, um, sure. that's your turn? Yep. Okay, Yagra is Stone Fist. Yagra is Stone Fist. Yagra Stone Fist is up next. Um, Zendaya is Michi. <laughs> and she is gonna... <laughs> <laughs> why, why are you laughing so hard at that? Oh, that's a that's a good callback right there, <laughs> man. Uh, okay, so she's gonna roll, attack, seven. No, she sucks. <laughs> so uh, we'll get there. Next, next up is Lazary. She, I don't have her right stats in there, so I'm just rolling face long sword, and she keeps missing. <laughs> Um, Lazary, it is your turn. Uh, I don't want to get too close, so I actually kind of peek up out from under the table and I see a, a large candle on the table, mm -hmm. and I'd like to grab that and throw it at the troll. Do it. Throw this large candle at the troll. At his head. Uh, what check is that? Uh, do a uh, dexterity check for me. So it's that plus my modifier? Yeah. A D has... Yeah, d20 plus your dexterity modifier. Nine. Uh, I'm going to say it flies. Uh, you're pretty close. So I'm going to say it hits him. Candle smacks him, uh, and his hair lights on fire. So <laughs> roll a d4 for me for damage. Two. Copy. Solid. Nice. Wow, you inadvertently did something very, very. Yeah, cool. cause I read, I read, did my. Uh... Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> so, I could read exactly what it says. Yeah. That's, oh, right. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> That's not cheap. Uh, okay, so Durnin's turn. Hey, you take what you can get. Yeah, that's true. Durnin is going to use his longsword. Maybe he'll finally hit. 17, that is a hit. Do some damage. That is some damage. This troll is on fire. Is not dead, but he's back to the state <laughs> of looking very unwell. <laughs> okay. Uh, and it is Bofus's turn. All right. Bofus the Dofus. I want to attack with advantage against this guy because I'm flanking. Um, let me think about that. No. Yeah. I mean, his hair's on fire. He's not. He wouldn't Do it, girl. Bofus. All right, so before before I do this, is there an easier way to roll advantage other than just roll it twice? Uh, was... 2d, 2d20. Like, oh, and then I look at the individuals? No, like if you type uh, R, like roll, and then yeah. 2d20. And then does that, what does that oh, give wait, me no, the individual? That's, no, that's not it. Oh no, oh, no, but that does give me the individual. Uh, uh, you know what, let me just do, I'm just going to do roll 2d20. Yeah. Okay, it shows you. Oh, plus sure. five, and then I'll just do that again. Oh no, wait, sorry. That's not right, that's not right. So I'll do that, cool. and then I'll do that. So I got a 19 and a 20. So, oh. 20 to hit. That's a hit. Okay, and then I'm gonna roll this for damage. It's four damage. 
Okay, so you slice uh, exactly where Karen had done her scimitar. Lazary. Lazary had done her scimitar, and it just goes right through, and the troll looks down, and his stumps fall out, and his stumps hit the ground, and he falls backwards and over the lip of the portal, and is gone. Oh, goodbye, right. fellow. Come again soon. He is dead. Wow. I just want to know, what was this guy doing? <laughs> oh, yeah, he's just hanging out. This guy? That's, uh... What about this guy? What about this lady? That's <laughs> Jalister Silverman. Just watching. Yeah, yeah, this just... is part of the night's entertainment. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, I'm feeling good about that. Uh, is that end of combat? End of combat. You guys right. are out of combat. So I just say, everybody okay? Everybody still alive? Somewhat? I have, less, I, I have less blood than I started with, but I'm fine. Okay, okay. I do. Well, I'm not sure I can heal anybody, to be honest with you, but I'm sure we can find other ways to help. Uh, Dernan turns to you guys and says, if you need anything, you'll get it for free at the Yarn, Yarnin portal. Perhaps good thing just, I'm already pouring myself a mug. Perhaps just uh, food and drink and one night's stay, perhaps. I feel I need a bit of a rest after that one. Uh, of course, of course. Uh, and I've got a gentleman asking for you. You might want to take a seat. Which He's gentleman? He's in the table at the back. Okay. Shall we head to the uh, table at the back? Okay, let me yes, move let's head back. back. So he is... Uh, it's Bolo over here. He's at the What's his name? Table. Okay. Bolo. Bolo? Like B-O-L-O? Like the weapon? V-O-L-O. -O. Oh. Like Bolo the guy. Like the historian. Yeah. Gotcha. It's the it's the guy. It's the guy. Uh, I'm gonna pour four flagon of ale and bring it over with me as I come over. Perfect. I should have. Um, so um, you approach the table and the figure strokes his mustache, adjusts his floppy hat, and tightens his scarf. Volotham Gadarn, chronicler, wizard, and celebrity at your service. I trust you've noted the violence in our fair city these past ten days. I hadn't seen so much blood since my last visit to Boulder's Gate. <laughs> but now I fear I have misplaced a friend amid this odious malevolence. My friend's name is Floon Blagmar. He's got more beauty than brains, unlike me. And I worry I took a I worry he took a bad way home a couple of nights ago and was kidnapped. Or worse. I can offer you ten dragons apiece now, and I can give you ten times that when you find my Floon. May I prevail upon you in my hour of need? A what? Ten what? Ten dragons. Oh, what's that? Is that just GP? It's like a gold piece. It is a piece. gold piece. I understand you've probably never seen a gold piece before, but my good man, they're called dragons. I'm going to let that one go. Um. <laughs> oh, what do you think? It sounds like... From this fight, we have a bit of a companionship going on between the trio of us. Shall we continue it? Yeah. At least one task more? I think we work well together. Yeah. Yes. Bit of a shame that everybody else was doing the swinging, though, but I'm sure we can overcome that particular weakness in our group. <laughs> oh, I'm sure, I'm sure. You'll be we able took to find some swings. <laughs> uh, yes, now, uh, it's decided then? Yes, now give us all the pertinent yes. details. Yes, of course. Uh, here's ten gold uh, mm -hmm. for each of you, and uh, again, a hundred gold in promise when you bring Flume back. For each of us. Yes, for each of you. Uh, my friend Flume is a handsome, handsome man. Handsome man. He's in his thirties. I last saw him while we were drinking and merrymaking at the Skewered Dragon. It's a dark body tavern in the Dark Ward. It is a dark body tavern tavern Bondry. in the dark ward. In the dark ward. How, how far is that from here? I, you'll have to forgive me. This is my first time in Waterdeep. Uh, it's uh, only a couple streets over. You take a uh, left on Fillet, Fillet Street and uh, I think the right on Candle Lane. I can't quite. Oh, yes. Just follow uh, the shadows, I imagine. To, I've been to the Skewer Dragon before. They have some, uh, some pretty high stakes games playing out mm -hmm. there. You must be careful. It's not necessarily the safest of places to uh, to lose and not be able to pay. 
Yeah. We do have a few clients in the area, perhaps. Good, good. Have some. Yes, I was. I was with help. Lou that night at the bar. And we we drank. Speaking of I was, drink, we just start from there. Were there any other companions with you, or any games you partook in? Um, I might have gotten him a little too drunk that night, but we didn't really play many games. Um, I met him there at the Skewer Dragon two nights ago, and we we drank and we gambled for a few hours, but then I left, and that's the last time I ever saw my friend. Two days ago, you said. Two two days ago. And uh, not to put you on the spot or anything, but. Is there anybody you may suspect? Um, no, Floon's a handsome idiot. I don't know quite why you would kidnap him. But um, perhaps someone just trying to sell him off as a slave? Do they do that in this town? Oh, there's all sorts of underground... I mean, they kidnapped him. Do they do that in kidnapped land? Not a fan of slavery myself. Yeah, I'm not so saying you, it's good slavery. And you don't think he's just run off somewhere? What makes you think he's been kidnapped? Oh, uh, it's just he would have told me if he was going somewhere. And uh, I mean, he was very tipsy that night. It's easy to take advantage of someone who's drunk out of their mind. Yes, it's true. Well, unless there's anything else, perhaps we should. Get on it. Go ask some questions, at least. Or maybe until tomorrow? What do you folks think? Oh, I say we at least spend some time here enjoying our fine ale yes, and our need, free amenities. I need a rest. I need yes. to recover. My small body cannot take it. What's the, what's the difference again between short rest and long rest? I know long rest restores, like, everything, but what about short rest? It depends. Like, if you or your, most spellcasters get spell slots back on long rest. Mm-hmm. And you get like hit dice, but long or like uh, on short rest you get hit dice and like class features based on what you get back uh, on short rest. Uh, okay, let me just double check real quick. Because I I'm out of spell slots. And I would, think you'd have to long rest as a bard. Yeah, so, yeah, I think you do right. a long rest if you want. Yeah, it is it is late at night. Five hit points. Okay, so let's let's long rest, and then in the morning, we're all good. Oh, yeah, I'm just going to get a glass of water. Yes, and right I'm back. going to find... Yeah. I'm going to do the same, actually. <sighs> Alright, so long rest recovers everything? Uh, yeah, you'll have to double check with Will, because I think you only get, like... I think, technically, you only get one hit die of health back, but he may just want you to go back to max health. But you get all your spell slots back. There we go. Oh boy, folks, thanks for watching. Um, we still got the session going. Just taking a little breaky break. Um, William, how do you want us to do hit yes, points sir. on long rest? Uh, you just get full hit points. Okay, cool, thanks. All right. um, I should have bought. You know what I should have done? I had this tradition playing D&D &D years ago with friends where I would, we would get a bottle of mead and drink it while we were playing D&D. I literally almost, we were gonna go to Total Wine, I was gonna get a bottle of mead for this. Yeah. I decided not to go. There's a lot of really good mead in Maryland. There's a lot of mead breweries down here. I, mead's so Meadery? good. Yeah, is it meadery? It's meadery. Yeah. It's so it weird. Meadery. That's I one of those meadery. words that, that is like correct, but it's wrong, you know? It's one of those words I learned from Skyrim. All right. I'm good, are y'all good? All right. I'm all set. Yep. Cool. So you guys stay the night. Um, uh, Dar Darnum, 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 Darnum gives you a room, uh, separate rooms, uh, and you stay the night. Um, let me just make sure I'm not missing anything. So yeah, you know, Volo last saw Floon outside of the Skewer Dragon. Um, he, they were drinking all night, and Volo said his friend was rather drunk and he left early from the skewer dragon uh, leaving Floon there at the skewer dragon um, so you guys that is over in the dock ward oh dock 
I thought you were saying dark. dark. Oh, uh, yeah, I thought you said dark as well. No, I was trying to say it was a dark, dark. shady tavern in the dock ward. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Come on, guys. Sorry. You idiots. Okay, so uh, you guys want to head over there? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you head down the street. Um, as you turn a corner, you find yourselves on a street that has been cordoned off by the city watch. Lying on the cobblestones are a half a dozen corpses, seemingly the victims of some terrible skirmish. Watch officers have disarmed and arrested three blood-drenched humans and are in the midst of questioning witnesses. One of the officers sees you, says, Get on! Nothing to see here. Well, uh, pardon me. Pardon me, officer. Is it City Watch? Is that correct? It's your uh, office? Yeah, you know it. Yes, uh, uh, lovely town. Uh, we've been hired recently by famous Yolo to look for Flume. Flume Blackmar. Have you have you seen him around? He was last seen around uh, here. Oh, okay. Get on. Move down the street. Well, perhaps, with your permission, we'd like to check the corpses, see if he's one of these. You go on back away now and go down the street, I'm going to arrest you. Arrest for him for what? Looking for a missing friend? No. For stopping me from not arresting you. While he's distracting him, can I just like sneak by and just quickly take a look at the bodies? Uh, yeah, you want to do, uh, what, uh, I don't have the skills in front of me. What is that? Um, Wouldn't be either side of hand, stealth, maybe. Uh, no. Yeah, whichever's higher for you to do. Okay. Do sleight of hand. Oh, then whatever's lower. Oh, then I'll do <laughs> sleight of hand. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. Seven. Um, so the guard, she grabs you mm -hmm. as you're looking, and she goes, Don't you even look in there! And pushes you back. Oh, sorry, sorry. Perhaps one last try then. Can we speak with the owner of the Street. dragon? The sh shattered dragon? I can't read my own dragon? handwriting. The oh, this is in, dragon. This, like, we're on the way to the skewer dragon. We just saw this in the street. Oh, but this isn't in front of the skewer dragon. No, the skewer oh, dragon is oh. still a couple blocks that way. Okay, can we just... Unless you guys want to do anything else, I think we just go around. Um, I was asking, when, as we're leaving, when did this happen? Uh, about uh, about 4 a.m. this morning. Oh. Some of the loud girls just thought they were sleeping. <laughs> Some what? of the locals thought they were sleeping? What happened exactly? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's just dead people. Just dead people? It doesn't seem like you're doing a very good job. Clearly. <laughs> We're not. We're not. <laughs> what do you mean? We're, we're cleaning it up. <laughs> what else do you want me to do? <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Perhaps it's best we leave this officer to their job. Yes, I'm sure they won't clean up the bodies. We can just come back and look at them later. Oh, wait, real quick, though. Just, um, I don't know if this is like a perception check or something. I just want to, like, the people who, uh, the, the bodies and the people who were arrested, I just want to like look at them real quick and see if I can see anything. If they're wearing like the same color, if they have the same tattoo, if they have a the same badge on them or something like that. Gotcha. Uh, perception. Uh, yeah, perception check for me. That is a three. <laughs> Strong three. Um, you have just a bout of person blindness. <laughs> they just they look like everyone you've ever met. <laughs> That sounds about right. Like one of them, you're like, is that my mom? And the other one is Mother. maybe a distant cousin. I do okay. kind of really want to see what these bodies are, so. <laughs> I'm going to go back to the uh, the first guy who tried to stop us. It's a woman. Oh, the it was, oh she was the one talking to him and me. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, clearly. <laughs> I'm allowed to have a deep voice. But, uh, pardon me, man, but I actually work for, uh, the coroner it's of this. Missed. I'm not married yet. <laughs> oh, my mistake, miss. And what a, what a lovely voice you have. <laughs> Look um, at me. <laughs> I actually, I actually work for the, uh, the coroner's office. Um, and I just wanted to make sure that these don't have the, uh, the plague that's going around before you we're, bring them in. We're on the corner of the street. 
no, the, not the coroner office, the uh, the coroner office. Uh -huh. You know, the the one who you bring the dead to. Oh, dead man. Yeah, the dead man. I work for the dead man. Mr. And, uh, Del Toro, yes. <laughs> and as you know, there's been a, a plague going around, and before you start handling these bodies, I just want to make sure that they're clean. They got plague? These guys got plague? Yeah, they might have plague. Boys, we're out. And uh, <gasps> the, three, the City Watch walk over to the three arrested guys, grab them, and just walk really fast away. Oh, that was perfect. That was perfect. Yes. Thank you. I'll, I'll notify... Uh, the dead man of uh, my bodies. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good day. Bye. I actually would like to also look at these bodies as I can diagnose any conditions. Yeah, if all three of you want to do uh, perception checks on the bodies. Okay. Can I investigate? Uh, yes. If you have an, if you have a skill that's higher. That oh. Pertains. Let me let me do uh, that again. I actually have, I have medicine. I have plus three, so that I can diagnose. Yeah, yeah, that's not a bad idea. Um, so, plus so just to be clear, uh, one of the questions I do have is if Flume Blagmar is among the corpses. If one of them is in their thirties and very handsome. Um. Oh yeah, he had. Uh, so you know, Flume is a handsome human male, early thirties, and wavy red blonde hair. Sorry. I didn't um, and he was dressed in princely garb with, uh, when Volo last saw him. Sometimes I hate the way these things are structured because, like, yeah. one paragraph is things I can tell you, and the next one's like, unbeknownst to this character. And yeah. Like, I can't read it. So, um, uh, so what do yes. I roll? That plus the modifier? D20 plus the modifier? Correct, yeah. Okay. Okay. And you were specifically doing medicine, right, Karen? Yes. Um, so I'll just do yours first, since it's the least... Wow, that's a great word. Since Karen's <laughs> is the least, um, like, full-focused. Uh, so as far as their deaths, it just looks like their throats were slashed. Uh, okay. No signs of illness or anything. No, 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 no plague or anything. That was clearly a lie. <laughs> uh, Rolthek. Rolthek? Roll that came up. Right. And I'm just kind of looking to see who they are for my yeah. role. Um, Bofus, you are for seven check. Uh, you just notice they're dead people, uh, and they just look like commoners, common peasants. Um, nothing. Well, mm -hmm. I shouldn't say common peasants. They like common. Yeah, probably like city folk. Ship dog. Yeah, city folk. So they probably were just mugged and uh, stuff st stolen. Uh, and then Rolthek, uh, as far as investigation, you notice um, that their fingernails are really dirty. Hmm. Um, There's clearly a struggle. Yes. And... Um, yes, this is no simple mugging if their throats were uh, And you also notice... Uh, two seconds. That they look like dock workers. Like they have very calloused hands from working with ropes. Mm -hmm. Who? How many bodies are there? Three. Three bodies. Who would want to kill three common dock workers? Oh. Probably those hooligans that were locked up. Yes. I'm sure they're guilty. They, I'm assuming they took the hooligans with them when they left, right? Yes, they did. Okay. Um, I've determined this is none of our business. Yes, I have come to the same determination. I'm more of a performer, less of a detective. <laughs> so <laughs> let me know when you get bored. I'll sing you a diddly. <laughs> okay, so you guys are going to move on? Yes, to the skewered dragon. Sweet. So you are uh, headed towards the dock ward. Mm -hmm. uh, the tall, densely packed tenements leave most of the neighborhood in shadow at the ground level. Uh, most of the street lamps have had their glass smashed, their candles stolen, the smells of salt air and excrement linger as you pass rows of rundown buildings. Thank goodness it's daytime. Uh, one nearby shop stands from the others, stands out from the others. It is a deep purple facade, and in its windows hangs stuffed, a stuffed beholder. 
Uh, above the door hangs a sign whose elaborate letters spell out Old Zock Blob Shop. Uh, can so you blob. Can you, can, you, can you spell that? Uh, X uh, Old yeah. then X-O-B-L-O-B So B Zoblob Zoblob Shop. Okay. Shop, shop, shop. Got it. Purple front with stuff the holder. Got it. Um, so it's just store uh what do you guys want to keep going check out the store um, um i'll just make a mental note of that store if we need to go there in the future i think so oh guys we we can become famous all we have to do is buy followers primes and views on bigfollows.com i love that it's two different bots send it at the exact same time same time yeah i'm i need to look that up off screen just, just to see what it is. <laughs> Make sure you get it. Yeah. You gotta get those big follows. Uh, so what did you decide? Sorry, I wasn't paying attention. I, I think I'm in favor of mental note, like Rolfex said. Mental note, copy. I forgot to activate this one. Okay. Um, so moving on, moving on, moving on, moving on. Mm -hmm. So you reach uh, the street with the skewer dragon. It's Fillet, Fillet Lane and Net Street. Oh my god, I thought you were making that up. No, when, I see I'm we, a good DM, I read ahead. Yeah, see how close I was, and you're just like, ah, oh, fillet lane, <laughs> and that street. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Um, the skewer dragon looks like a ruin. Both of its front-facing windows are smashed, and the ship's anchor is lodged in the roof. Through the windows, you can see a group of haggard patrons drinking from huge anchors. Uh, let's let's head on in. Actually, you know what? Sorry, I I want to do a quick investigation check. Um, I know you said it looks smashed, etc. I'm gonna look for signs of like a fresh struggle. So like a newly broken window, like a freshly smashed board, like a bit of dirt that has like a bunch of footprints and shuffles in it. Any sign of like a struggle around the tavern? Um, yeah, you can roll if you want. Okay, I'm just gonna. Or yeah, uh, yeah, I'll do this. I rolled an 18. Uh, so you don't see any fresh signs of struggle. A lot of it looks like stuff that has happened before, or like, all the smashed up has dust on it, or like some of the broken glass is covered because people are just sitting on it. Yeah. Um, yeah, nothing, nothing fresh. Okay. Thanks, Bill. And um. Just before we go into, so you, this is like clearly a dock, uh, like a docker's bar. Yeah, dockside bar. Yeah, I'm going to quickly do a costume change where I'm going to flip my coat from inside out from its silken exterior to its like threadbare and patchy uh, darker color exterior. Okay. Take off my hat, stuff it into my bag, and pick up some mud and put it all over my, like, rub my face with some mud to kind of get a more disheveled and dock worker vibe. Okay, oh, I'm in Slack it. my jaw slightly. Fancy you, fancy, fancy. I see the games you play, Rothek. Yes. Also, I owe some a man some money in this bar, and I don't want to be seen. Oh, I suppose that makes sense. Okay, uh, so you guys all want to head in? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so inside the bar, there's just a few people... Uh, look kind of like regulars just drinking um, no one really in particular stands out uh, and there's also just a, a barmaid um, I'd like to go speak with the barmaid hello hello miss would you like a piece of ale yes I, I will I, I'll have a, a little bit of ale that'll be ten copper donuts ten copper donuts okay let me just minus that real quick I, perhaps while I drink, uh, you know, I'm not here just for your company. Uh... <coughs> Jeez. Bless you. Um, perhaps you could tell me, uh... We're, we're here on behalf of YOLO. You know the famous YOLO, the scholar, and the... The author? Ah, uh, yes, you only live once. Um, I don't know YOLO, I know of Olo, though. Volo. Yes, well, we were hired by Bolo. Bolo is <laughs> we were hired by Bolo. And uh, Bolo. he was here the other night, right? With his friend? His friend Flume? 
I don't be knowing anything you'd be talking about. Oh, you see, he came and hired us because his friend Flume, who he was here with about two, three nights past, he hasn't seen him since. He said they had a great time here as always. Lots of beer, lots of entertainment. Lovely maiden serving the ale, I, of course. I wasn't working on the night. Oh. But some of those regulars over there, they're here every night because they got nothing better to do. Ah, okay. Well, well, thank you. I'll get back to my ale and let you get back to being a beautiful barmaid. Oh, thank you, sir. I'm very good. I'd like to uh, approach oh, yeah. one of the patrons, too, if he was doing the same as well. Okay, sure. Uh, I'm a patron. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll order a mug of ale and just sit down next to him and like look up at him and gruff. Uh, it's a sign of acknowledgement. You, you got mud on your face. Uh, well, just got off the night shift. Well, uh, there's... there's labor laws. We don't have any night shifts anymore. Yeah, if you don't want to get the good pay. Can you please get away from me? <laughs> well. All I right. Mean. Perhaps I <laughs> go up there. Maybe I can be a little more convincing. Um, hello, sir. How are you doing today? You look like uh, you can use a little uh, bit of a uh, potion of vitality. No, no I'm I've got my ale. Why is everyone talking to me today? <laughs> Perhaps, friends. This will There's loosen, a third one? This will loosen <laughs> your tongues a little more. And I take a single gold piece. And I put it on the table, but I keep my finger on it. And I say, to whoever tells us about Flume Blagmar and where he is. Flume was here the other night with Volo. They were drinking a lot and gambling a lot. And then Volo left. And then Flume met up with his friend Brainard. And so they hung out for a while. And they both left together. And that's the last time I ever saw them. Please give me the gold. Uh, yes, one last piece. This Brainard, I'm not familiar with him. Who is he? Uh, Rainar Never Ember. He's the son of the previous lord. Uh, Chip off the old block, that one. Rainar Ever Ember? Never Ember. Never Ember? Never Ember. Never Ember. Never Ember. Okay, and then I take my finger off the piece. And the guy who spoke gets it. Yeah, he scraps it up, puts it in his pocket. Well, um, a little expensive, of course, but we're getting a hundred gold back, so shall we move on? I'll just ask him, do you, do you normally have former royalty in this bar? No, it was a little weird. Um, yeah, Bolo was here, he's a regular, Floon too. And then uh, Raynar was here, met with Floon. And then they left, and then a big group of guys left after them. The group of guys? Tell me about them. Uh, they look like some of those, uh... Zentarim guys. Sorry, real quick. Um, Raynar Never Ember is the son of the disgraced guy, right? Is that right? Yeah, Daggled Never Ember. Son of Daggled. And then... What were those guys called? Uh, Zentarim. Uh, Zentarim. They're one of the factions I mentioned at the beginning. Okay. Uh, anything else, gentlemen? Anything else? We've just bought you, by my rough estimate, about ten flagons of ale. Anything else you'd like to offer to the investigation? Yes. Yeah, uh, so have, you, have you seen any of those Zentarim boys in here uh, before or in the past? Not, not since. I, I know they just hang out at that warehouse over on Candle Lane. Hmm. I it's think, got a uh, snake symbol on the door. Yes. I hmm. think, uh, think we might pay the uh, Zentarms a little visit. Yes, let's do that. Yes, and then maybe after that we visit the prestigious Neverember family. Well, I don't know if they're uh, <laughs> they're still uh, housed up in in Waterdeep. True. Wasn't wasn't that uh, he exiled? He uh, was. I exiled. think he was just kicked out of his position. I don't think they oh. were. Uh, I don't think they were uh, pushed out necessarily. Mm -hmm. So, uh, how are we feeling? Ready to to move on? I know that was a quick location, but I feel like we got everything we needed right away. Yeah. 
Yeah, let's do it. Um, uh, and yeah, I agree with you, uh, Rolltech. Let's head to the um, the warehouse for the Zentharum. All right. From the sounds of it, they were following them. At least oh, helping us know more of what happened. Okay. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Cool, cool. You can mm-hmm. still hear me, right? Yep. No. Okay. <clears throat> no, I'm just making it. I moved my microphone. So. Um... Yeah, they should become famous by followers. Anyways, uh, so you guys, uh, you're headed off for uh, where? Where are we going? To the uh, the warehouse with the sake symbol on candle, cuddle lane. Cuddle lane? Candle, candle lane? Candle, candle lane. lane? Candle cuddle. I have bad hand. Uh, okay, so gloom envelops a narrow alley as dark as a dungeon. As an odorous, as, and as odorous as one too. Nearly all the street lamps have been smashed. And the only light that pierces the darkness is a faint flicker from the da- from the lane, like a distant candle. Um, can we go to the building with the snake on it? Yeah, find the building with the snake on it. I will look for a building with a snake on it. You want to do a perception check for me? I will. Um, so you walk up to the candle, you notice that it is just being kept alight by a continuous flame spell, Mm -hmm. and you notice it's flickering onto a doorway across the street that has a black winged snake on it, which is the symbol of the Zentara. Um, and you recognize it, yeah, you recognize it as their symbol. So, do you want to go there? How do we, how do we want to approach this, the this uh the situation my friends um we... so, real quick let me just pull up again the brief guy so the zentharum are an affiliation of merchants and mercenaries known for their cutthroat tactics rumors have emerged of a schism among their members in water deep so just kind of get, trying to get an idea these guys we know they're shady so we should be a little bit scared mm-hmm. i mean i i, I, I kind of want to knock on the door because we don't have yes anything bad about these guys right because we even though we may suspect them we're just approaching them as hey you saw these guys at the bar what's going on that's it right uh, the only yeah. problem is if they are sketchy and they've done something yeah they might not take too kindly to ask, asking around so perhaps it's one person at the door the other two people are How? hidden and then if things go bad then we find another way in all three of us mm-hmm. yes how about i go knock on the door and if they start asking me questions I can just say I'm going door to door selling potions. Work. Yeah, but 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 you still gotta ask about um, about Flume. Flume and. All right. Yeah. So maybe maybe. Uh, all right. Yeah. Just say you're looking for them and, and you you knew they were at the bar with them the other night. All right. So I go up to the door and I knock on it. Yeah, I will be hiding kind of in the shadows. Yeah. Watching. Um, okay, so let me... A gentle knock. Move here. Uh, you guys can't see anything, right? That's right. It's Correct. black. All right. Here, here. Sorry, I messed something up here. I gotta fix it quick. Uh oh, what has happened? Uh, talk amongst yourselves. Hi. Hello. Hello. Here we are. Hi. Uh, how you guys? How you guys feeling so far? I feel pretty good. I think things are going well. Yeah, yeah, I like this a lot. I feel pretty good. Yeah. So something we need to figure out is how often we want to do this. I think Will and I originally said monthly, but 
I feel like we could bump that up a little bit, maybe like every two or three weeks. Does this time slot roughly work for you guys, like a Sunday afternoon? Yeah. Uh, I think for the most part, yeah, if we give like advanced notice, it should work. Yeah. Okay, so that's a good idea. And I think I think kind of the key indicator is going to be Will, if he has prep work to do. Mm -hmm. um, but I yeah, I like the idea of doing this, you know, because I, I, I don't mind monthly, but the problem is monthly means it would take five months for us to get through this. And I'd like to speed it up just a little bit. Um, and then the other thing we've talked about is, you know, this session, we're already uh, almost two hours into this session. Um, but what we've talked about before was just having like a five or six hour session with some breaks in it on a day. Because uh, at least in person, when I play D&D, &D, we tend to do like six or seven hour sessions. Yeah, um, we do the same. Yeah, because I'm just worried about this is fun, but I'm worried if we space it out too much or make them too small, then it's going to take forever. And then we abandon the story before it's done. All right. And this is a kind of a good time slot to do those longer sessions if need be. Yes. And also a good like global time slot in terms of COVID because there's nothing else yep. to do. Yeah. Um, how's it going, Will? Uh... Still setting things up? No, we should be. Uh, you know, actually, I want to go through real quick. I, I don't think this has to be in character, but I, I'm going to consider this not metagaming. Let's just go through real quick what, what your character highlights are. So, for example, my character is very good at deception, performance, and persuasion, as well as uh, acrobatics, because my high stat is dexterity and charisma. So I, I'm, I'm not really, I don't want to say stealthy, even though I can do that. It's more about getting in their face and, and being charismatic or being a little acrobatic to get to get around things um and i think i think that's mostly going to be my how i'm going to help in combat and outside of combat uh what about you josh what's what's your um, character's strengths roll tech is actually very similar to yours uh but i would say more of a focus on he likes to pretend to be someone he's not so yes, he does a lot good. of persuasion deception but more deception on trying to get his foot in the door somewhere that he's normally not welcomed um, but he's Got also uh, pretty knowledgeable of the investigation and history of uh, the area because he likes to impersonate uh, mm -hmm. people of importance to get what he needs. Nice. That's great. Um, and Lazary, what's what's your character's strengths? Uh, well, her... Uh, she's a little, like, skewed. I don't really like the way that it panned out, but she is... Um, her constitution is actually the highest, so she could really push... Her mm -hmm. body to the limit. That's good. Um, and she is pretty uh, strong in intelligence and wisdom, uh, history, much like Rolfec, medicine, mm -hmm. nature, arcana. Um, and she is small, so she can also get into uh, smaller spaces. Okay, that's good. Yeah, I think we've got a nice variety. And I like that we're not the typical, you know, what is it, tank, healer, DPS mm -hmm. triangle. Uh, William, how's it going? Good. You guys can hear the music, right? Yes. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Um. So we're all set. Uh. You guys. I put Karen at the front door. Lazary. I put Lazary at the front door. Uh. And you guys are over there. Um. Uh, yeah. You can just see that little dark circle. Uh. The one thing I do want to change is. Oh, that's funny. So I can't see uh, Lazary, but it's because she's not inside my vision, which is cool. Yeah, I'm just gonna. Oh, you you can change your character. Uh, 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 if your character has dark vision, you can change that. So. Oh yes, yeah. I have it. I I, I do Dim not. Dim vision. Um, should be my character. Sorry. It says dim vi vision is thirty. But I have dark Yeah, vision, so if you so. click on the little cog, uh -huh. you click on your character in the cog, there's vision. Yes. You can change dim, bright. So uh, if I have dark vision and can see up to 60 feet, I should change dim vision to 60? Um, no, you should. Yes. Yes. <laughs> just want to make sure before I do it. I don't want to mess something up. Okay. Oh. Oh, this is cool. Okay, so, uh, Karen, you're at the door, uh, and you said you were going to knock at it? Yes, I was going to give it a gentle knock. A gentle knock. So you gently 
knock on the door, uh, and uh, nothing really happens. Huh. Give it another uh, knock. Can I can I knock a little bit louder? Yeah, sure. Right, uh, I knock slightly more aggressively. Uh, inside you hear like a crash, uh, something breaking, but nobody uh, is coming to get answer the door. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to walk around to see if I can see. It. Is this like a wall up here? Um, yeah, it's a wall up there. Are there well, any? Are there any windows? I can see. I so see there's, two. So there's this gate door here. I see two other doors. There's a yes. Yeah, so there's a giant warehouse door, and there's another little door next. To it. All right. Can I walk down to uh, the little door next to the warehouse? Whoops. Where did I go? I'm here. And I, can I knock on this door down here? Yeah. All right, so I give that a uh, hearty knock. Um, no. Oh, what's that? What that? Uh, I put a light down. Oh, okay. Is there any uh, uh, crevice or crack? Or windows? That I can look through? Windows I can look through? Uh, there are windows. Yeah, I'm uh, kind of looking for windows or anything on the outside. No, there are no windows. It. There's no windows. Alright. I think we need to try kicking down the door. Kicking or opening? Yes, I'm sure. Well, well does anyone have, uh, we... is anyone skilled with lock picking? We could also wait until someone enters and see how they enter. If there's some sort of secret code needed to enter the premises, yes. like a secret knock. Maybe, maybe we give it an hour, see if anybody shows up. All right. Okay, so I think we're gonna wanna like, hide a little bit in the shadows. Somewhere to hide out here. Uh, Will, could I use minor illusion to make a box that I can sit in? Um, yeah, that's fine. So, yeah, and then I think I can see through it if I know it's not real. Uh, yeah, that's fine with me. All right. Yeah, I just have to keep casting it basically. I'll okay, that. you're gonna do that, then I'll, I'm gonna wait around the corner. And I think we're just gonna, the plan is just to wait for an hour, right? And see if anybody comes in. Mm -hmm. Ooh, ooh, okay, wait, okay, wait. What? I have an idea. Will, let me know if this is feasible, if this is stupid. I think I want to, I wanna be within about 30 feet of these doors, right? And so the idea is, if somebody walks out, I want to cast a mage hand to hold the door open so it doesn't close. Gotcha. But I also don't yeah, want to be, like... I don't want to be seen, or at least I don't want to look suspicious. Um... Yeah, I'll say you can be on the outside of the fence just because it's not like, it, yeah, if you can concentrate, you can kind of get yeah. your mage hand a little bit further. Okay. So maybe I'll just, I'll be here. Is this? And then I'll just be like, I'll just be kind of slumped over. I'll, I'll try to look a little bit like a bum. And that way, if, yeah. anybody, if anybody comes in or out, I won't let the door close because I have mage hand. Yeah. Okay, that works. Okay. Uh, is there any way to climb up the fence or climb up the side of the building? Uh, no, it's kind of like flat stone. No, no real good purchase points. So I think I think if we all have our plan set, which is I'm going to do the mage hand. Roltec, you're going to try and listen if there's a password or anything. Yeah, Lazary, I'm watch and listen. Yeah, and Lazary, you're going to keep like looking around. I think we're just going to wait an hour and see if anybody comes in or out. Does that sound good? Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Anything happened in that hour? Uh, nothing happens in that hour. 
All right, I think we definitely try and pop a door. Okay, so how do you lockpick okay. in in this? So you need to actually have the tools and be proficient with the tools in order to do that. Okay, so the tools, is it actually lockpicking? I think thieving kit or something like that. Oh, okay, um, yeah, because all I have is disguise tools. kit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a small knife. So maybe we just try to open each of the doors then. Okay. I'm going to start with the small door in the bottom. Yes. So, uh, I would say st- at least one of you would have these tools, I assume. Uh, yeah. I have disguise kit and four doors. Yeah, I have disguise kit. Uh, I have... Because we're not, we're not um, rogues. I have a small knife. That's probably the closest thing. Can yeah, I you use can that you. to try yeah, and pick. All right, so I take the small knife and I try Give to. Me a dexterity check. Yes. Seventeen. Uh, so you pop pop the lock on it so that it's unlocked. Nice. Over here. Oh, can I open it? Uh, you open the door. All right, and I take a step just inside. Isn't there a way to open it? Oh, there it is. It's open. Click it. Oh, oh, this is oh I cool. can't see because I have to go in here. Okay, I'm going to move through as well. I'm right here, just out, just inside the door. Um, okay, I think I want to stealth up to these boxes. Okay, so uh, you guys enter. Uh, table and chairs have been care- uh, carelessly tossed across the floor. The corpses of dozens of men lie along the walls. There are rapiers and daggers lying nearby. On the north side of the area, stairs rise to an open level above. Oh, so we don't think there's anybody else on this level. Is that what you're saying with your description? Yeah, correct. Yes, it would, okay. would make sense why nobody answered. I want to investigate these corpses. I'm going to take yeah. a look at them. You said they're strewn along the wall? I'm going to yeah. walk, walk around. Okay, so as you guys enter... Um, uh, actually, come back to the main room. Yeah, sorry, it's just kind of annoying because it won't let you move through walls, so you have to, like... Yeah. Um, so as you guys enter this main room, uh, four Kenku uh, uh-huh. jump from behind the boxes and uh, get a nice little surprise attack on you guys. Wow. Okay. <sighs> um, let me just add these guys. So is that versus our uh, passive they're, they're just They're just going to go. Yeah, yeah okay. and you guys knocked and everything and told them yep. they were there. Right so this is just gonna be I don't let me just duplicate these guys. Do 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 do. Huge mistake. <laughs> I started dragging them without realizing which ones I had dragged over already. Uh, one second, I'll be right back. Okay, so these guys are Kenkus. They're like uh, weird hawk sort of guys. Let me wait for Ian to come back. Um, if you guys, you guys can do checks if you want to know more about them. Um, you know more about them. Yeah, I can think I, I do a. Um. I don't know what it would be. Either. I have arcana history. or animal handling. History or nature, probably. Oh, or... I have nature. Plants, animals, mm-hmm. terrain, weather. Uh, so yeah, can I do a nature check just to recall information? Uh, yeah. Twenty-one. 
21. That's a very good roll. Daddy's here. Are we rolling initiative? Yeah, uh, not yet. Uh, they're rolling nature checks. Oh, okay. Um, okay. So you know about Kenku, that they are feathered humanoids that wander the world as vagabonds driven by greed. Uh, they can perfectly imitate any sound they hear. Uh, they wear ill-fitting cloaks and robes. They speak in pantomime. Uh, so a Kenku asking for money might make the sound of coins clinking together. Um, These guys are kind of cute. Know how to fly. Honestly. They, they don't have any sense of uh, creativity either. They're like sentient crows. They're kind of cool looking. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Yeah, that's that's all you know. Um, are we are we in? Like, what's their posture? Are they are they ambushing us? Yeah, so they jumped out from behind the boxes and now they're ambushing you. So they get a surprise round. Okay, yeah, that's fine. So I'm gonna roll their initiatives. If you guys want to tell me yours, or I can roll you them for you. I'll use. Oh yeah, you can just click the button. Damn. I got a four again. Nineteen. Okay. Did you guys, you guys went to the encounter page and rolled? Uh, I did, yeah. No, no I, I, just, I rolled from D&D uh, &D Beyond. Oh, so D&D &D Beyond did it. So Karen, if you go to the encounter, not now, but where your 19 is, there will be a dice icon next time. Tree Troll says he cast magic missile. Tree Troll, get back on the boat. I like Tree Troll. Magic Missile. Okay. It's a good classic. Where's so, Kenku's. Uh, the uh, fist. Combat Tracker. Yeah, the combat fist. Tracker, second sorry. from the yeah. left. It says encounters for me, which is. Why it's confusing. Okay, so Kenku. So, this guy is going to go. Oh. Okay, this guy, uh, Josh, you're gonna be there. Or no, sorry, Bofus is gonna be there. Karen, you're there, and uh, sorry, Lazary. And uh, how'd you get your name to be there, Karen? Um, I click, right click the little gear icon and change display name to always. Yeah, I thought I set that up Update. too. Update. I did that before and then it went away, so I had to do it a second time. Okay. Oh, maybe whenever he gets rid of it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, or when we change you, scenes. I think you could do that with the Kankus also. You can right click and will and yeah. Yeah, you just gotta make sure you hit. The, the thing I keep doing is I exit instead of update. Yeah. But you think, can you give them numbers like one, two, three, four? Yeah. Oh, I will fix that. It's a big half one. <laughs> I expected it to like zoom in on my guy, but. Did you uh, use the in potion of enlargement? Yes. <laughs> oh, what have you done? Um, sorry, I'm just seeing if there's a way to. Okay, I'm good. Okay. So, uh, starting. So, Kanku 3 is gonna go here, and he is going to. Short sword, you. You mean Kenku one? Kenku three. Starting with oh, Kenku yeah. three. Yeah. They all go at the same time, so I'm just doing this one first. Oh yeah, because it's a surprise round. Okay. Uh, I'll allow it. You can do it. <laughs> Thank you guys. I'm so glad you're letting me do this. Yeah, but you're on thin ice. Oh, I'm an idiot. I just wrote it. That's uh, a hit. So he's gonna hit for, that's a hit? That's a hit. So... What? You didn't do slash. Did question mark instead of slash. There's not I a, love that. There's not I an easy way to just... There's I, not like a... No, because... The, sorry, these guys aren't in... Oh, you're manually doing boundary, it. so I have to do it by hand. But I literally made that a private roll, so you guys wouldn't see it. And <laughs> I typed it wrong, so it's gonna be nine damage. Uh, I'm down. All right, I'm leaving. 
<laughs> no, I'm not even kidding. I'm down. Yeah. You're down? Okay. Yeah, I'm down. Let me see if I can make myself down. I'm out. Um, Kenku 4. It's gonna move here. Kenku 2. I'm gonna go here and Kenku 1. No. Sorry, I meant to put 4 there. So I made that the down symbol. It's like a, a swirl on top of a skull. Gotcha. Wait, you're downed? Yeah, yeah. I'm downed. Yeah, I had 9 HP and they out. hit me for 9. And where, what are you roll set? Uh, I'm I'm at 10. Start at 10. Okay, so... So, uh, 2 is going to roll against you, Karen. It's an 11. Does that hit? Uh, my armor class is 11. So that's a hit. Even with your shield? Even with my oh, my shield is plus two. Oh, so, so it's that 13, is not a hit. Thirteen actually. Oh, which I realized uh, the last combat I kept saying eleven when it should have been thirteen. Oh, gotcha. It's thirteen. Okay, so then Kenku one is gonna try to attack you. Uh, for a twenty-one. So, uh, 13. So that's 8. Uh, and he's gonna do 7 damage. Uh, okay. Is this, like, one of those video game fights where you're supposed to lose, and then there's a cutscene? No. Uh, we'll say yes. (laughs) Uh, and then... Kenku 4 is gonna attack you, Josh. Mm -hmm. Roll attack. Uh, roll attack. And it's going to be a 19. Oh, that'll hit. Alright, so I'm at 6. Dang. And that's going to be 5 damage. It's half. Uh, change. Okay, I, I actually just have a question about range. Mm-hmm. So if right now, for example, let me measure where I am. If I wanted to do something and Bofus, uh, something that's within 15 feet and Bofus is like a little bit within 15 feet, would he be affected by it? It depends on what it is. But I think, I think if, if it, it was an attack or you, like a, a attacking spell. But if you count, if you count squares, I am within 15 feet. Okay, so if it's one, so five, ten, fifteen. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Count squares. Don't measure. Okay. Because there's no, okay. there's no grid on this one because the maps have a grid on it. Um, okay. Okay, so it's both. It's, it's your turn. You have to do a saving roll throw. Yeah, I think it's just a yeah, flat roll, right? It's uh, yeah, the d twenty and then high or low. Okay, here we go. So high is good blow is bad i think yeah sorry i'm just popping it so i can see what i roll four that's a low that's a fail mm-hmm. so one failure that's, that's one one failure um okay so next up is lazary your turn okay um okay i want uh well, i guess i might have to do a few can I move? Can I jump over this Kenku and then cast a spell, or or would that just count as one action? Um. I wanted to jump over Kenku. You could one. Move through his square to the other side. Uh, yes. I, yeah, I guess you could just jump over. Well, I c- I can move through. That's fine. I just didn't know if it would wouldn't count that be one. an opportunity attack from. No, because she's not leaving his... Well, range. the other one. The other would one. be. Oh, from the other one. You're right, you're right. Yeah, so you would get an attack of opportunity from Kenku 2. Okay, so... Um, uh, okay, yeah. Let me do... That. Okay, so he's going to roll against you. Yeah, Kenku 2 is going to attack you if you do that. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, I want to do that. I'm going to move over here. Okay, and he's going to miss. Oh, so both of them are going to get an attack. Up. Oh, no. Okay. No, I'll be here. I'll be here. Okay. So, Kenku 2 miss. Okay. So you're good. And I'm going to cast Thunder Wave. Okay. Uh, oops, I clicked that twice. So, uh, a wave of thunderous force sweeps out from me. Each creature in a 15 foot, 15 foot cube originating from myself must make a constitution saving throw. So that's Kenku 1, 2, and Bofus. Is Bofus in the range? Yeah, 15 foot cube. What is it? Oh, what if I move over here? Uh, yeah, then he's out of range. Yeah, you can do that. And it's still, it, it, uh, I'm still, yeah, it still in gets both, though. Okay, all right, so I'm going to do that. So um, what do they have to do? So on a failed, uh, they have to make a constitution saving throw. On a failed save, a creature takes 2d8 thunder damage and is pushed 10 feet away from me. On a successful save, the creature takes half as much damage and is not pushed. And what is a successful? Or what's... I, I rolled a 17 It's a constitution a saving throw. Oh, what's your spell DC? Oh. Uh, 11. Okay. Okay, so they saved. They both saved, so they take half as much damage. So it's a 2d8 and then just half of whatever that is. Okay, so roll damage. Okay, so let's do Kinku 1. I think well, you just, just roll, roll. You, you roll 2d8. Oh, okay. And then I take the same half. damage. So yeah. It's 4. Each, so they each get 4. Okay, okay, got it. Okay, so next up is Kenku 1, who is going to move here and attack you. Uh, you're gonna roll a six, which is a miss. Uh, so then it is Kanku 3's turn, who is going to walk over Bofus. And go over here. He's gonna do a ranged attack on uh, Lazary. And that's a 13, so that's a hit, right? Yeah. Okay, so he uh, is going to make the sound of an arrow being thrown, and then you hear the sound of an arrow being thrown. And by being thrown, Wait, I mean... Wait, he's throwing shooting. an arrow? <laughs> uh, actually, yeah, he, no, he's shooting an arrow, but he's making the sound and then actually doing it. Mm -hmm. So okay. uh, let me just check damage here. Uh, so it's going to be six damage. Uh, no, I had only six. Okay, so you're at zero, so you're down. When does the cutscene start? <laughs> when does the cutscene start? It's a good thing that we're, uh, we're all such close friends and I would never leave you guys to die. I've already <laughs> started thinking about what my next character is going to be after Bofus dies, so it's going to be a little bit more tanky. I didn't expect this to be so hard. Well, okay, I will say my one complaint is we came in there and I said, so the first floor is empty? And you're like, yeah, the first floor is empty. <laughs> and then we started moving well, around. <laughs> well, we didn't, we didn't look. Yeah. yeah, that's true. But I, but you did the description, and I said, so the first floor is empty, and you said, yeah. Well, yeah, because it looked empty to you. Um, okay. Um, Karen, so you're down. Okay. 
Um, so next is Kenku 2, who is going to go over to Josh. Um, no, he's, sorry, he's going to go there. Uh, and he's going to attack you. So sorry. Uh, he's going to roll a 16. That'll hit. Uh, for six damage. I'm unconscious. Perfect. <laughs> it's so great. Uh, okay. So you guys are all unconscious. Um, so it, you wake up to a very loud noise. Um, let me just get rid of all these guys. Put you over here. So you guys are, you wake up and you are all tied together around these crates. And there's a very large noise and it is this giant door opening. Okay. And uh, the city watch is here. And uh, there are those guys are nowhere to be found. Um, nothing has been stolen from you. And uh, it looks like a bunch of the bodies were searched more than when you, when you were first there anyways. Uh, and you can tell you were kind of searched, but nothing was taken. Okay. Um, and so the city watch, you see a guard come in and go, what, what are you doing here? And he walks over and unties you. He's like, what What happened here? Uh, tell us what happened. Kinkus. We were attacked. Yeah, we were attacked by birds. My yes, we were, we were attacked Kinkus. by the kinkus. There's, why, it doesn't make sense. This is a Zentarn warehouse, but all these guys are dead. This is strange. Well, I'm, me and my men are going to have a look around. Uh, just get better. Where? So he kind of like picks you guys up. And uh, he and his men start like looking at the bodies and investigating stuff. Uh, so just real quick, what's our what's our hit points? Like one? Yeah, you'll be back up at one. Okay. I've got my one. Okay. Um. I, so I want to take a peek around. Yeah, so you guys are free to walk around and look around. Um, the captain is, uh, who had spoken to you briefly, is at the other door. So basically just talk to him before you leave. Um, I want to do an investigation of the corpses. Just to see what's up. Uh, sure. Okay, roll. That is a... Oh boy. That is a 21. That's a nat 20. Um, it kind of looks like these character, these guys were taken by surprise. Mm -hmm. um, you can tell that they had, this is like a regular storage warehouse for Zentarum. Um, you see all sorts of like ropes that had tied people up, so you can assume that people who were kidnapped were usually taken back here. Um, and on the floor, you see a lock of golden blonde hair, red blonde hair. Which you, because you rolled a nat twenty, can be pretty darn sure is Flume's. Is it uh, is it Flume or Floon? Floon, F, F L O O N. Oh, okay. And also, while you're searching, you hear a uh, like muffled cry slash heavy breathing from the uh, storage closet underneath the stairs. Yes, I. I'm right here. I wanted to uh, try and open this door. Okay, you're gonna try and open it? Yeah. Okay, it's unlocked. Okay, so I open it. Okay, so you open it and inside you see a disheveled man uh, looking very fancy uh, and uh... sorry. Um, it smells strongly of sour fish and vinegar uh, there's discarded ropes all sorts of stuff and underneath one of them you see a disheveled man is hiding there seemingly has slipped free from rope bonds um, so there's a guy in there what Hi. are you doing here I, uh, I escaped 
in the in the chaos and hidden here. Oh, who are you? I'm uh I'm uh Raynar Never Ember. <gasps> Never Ember. Are you the son of the previous ruler? Dagold Never Ember? Yes, I am. And friends with Floon? <gasps> Floon, do you know where he is? They took him away. But he was here with you. Yes, we were kidnapped together by those men from the Zentarum. They followed us out of the bar and brought us here. But then we were attacked, and I ran away in the chaos. And they took hold, 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 hold. Loon away. The Zentarum are the ones that kidnapped you. Yes. And then who attacked them? Well, the Zentarum think that my father embezzled a large amount of gold while he was the open lord. And that he hid the dragon somewhere in the city. They think he, they think they can find it by using an artifact called the Stone of Galore. It's the Lord up here. Was <laughs> the Stone of Galore. That yeah. is G O L O R R. Okay. Which was in uh, the hands of the. No, what? continue. Was in the hands of the Xanthar Guild until recently. Apparently, someone stole it. The Zents thought I knew something about all of this, but I don't. My father and I haven't spoken in years. Um, can I do an arcana check on Stone of Galore? Oh, if you know what it is? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Let's see if I know what it is. They could do a history on Dragon Horde as well. 23. Oh, it's a nat 20. Not 20. Uh, um, you know, sorry, I'm just trying to read what I'm allowed to say and not. So, you know that there's a thing called the Stone of Galore. Uh, it was passed from one hand to another. Uh, and you know, it eventually found its way to Waterdeep. Um,. The Stone of Galore is actually an aboleth transformed by magic. In this inanimate state, the aboleth can read the mind of any creature that attunes to the stone, as well as modify that creature's memory. Uh, a creature attuned to the stone can also extract information from the aboleth, including anything leading to like anyone's secrets or anything like that. So it can basically like hack your mind? Yeah. Right. Or hack others' minds? It's like downloading information from your mind, taking it from you, but you can access that information. But if you try to, yeah. it might steal something from you. You could say, maybe have this thing and put it, hold on to it and wipe the location of somewhere from your brain and put it in that thing. Mm -hmm. mm. It's a very dangerous tool. Hmm. Yes, indeed. The wrong hands. Someone can cause a lot of damage and this do we is the dragon horde a thing that people know about like is that a common phrase or story um there's a lore there's a lot of like rumors and stuff that never ember stole a ton of gold and hid it somewhere mm -hmm. that's like the common uh rumor right but nothing concrete you should be more careful with uh, that sort of rumor going all, going around town. It's no surprise you were kidnapped. Now you've drunk, uh, dragged uh, Floon into this. I know. I feel so bad for my friend. I right, just need to find him. And you, you said you were attacked. Were, were the Harpers attacked when they had you know, they had captured you? And by who? Uh, that we were attacked by some of the Xanathar's guild guys. Or not the Harpers, the yeah, Xanathar's. No, no. Oh, but. But who attacked them? You said there was a melee in which you were able to get away? Mm -hmm. Yes, I was kidnapped by the Zentarum, and then we were attacked by the Xanathar guild members while we were here. Wait, those are two separate those are two separate things? Yeah. Xanathar. What's Xanathar? Xanathar guild is just another faction. Oh my god, why do they make them sound so similar? Uh 
And uh, you guys would probably know this, but Xanathar is a beholder. Oh, okay. Like, Xanathar's guide to everything, all that sort of stuff. Do we know of the Xanathar's, uh, like, faction and what they're about? Yeah, uh, let me see if I can catch you up on it. Probably should have read beforehand. Uh, Xanathar is a paranoid megalomaniac beholder crime lord whose goal is to wipe out anyone it perceives as a Zentarum operative or sympathizer. Mm-hmm. Got it. Okay. Interesting stuff. Anything else, Reynar, that may help us? We've been hired. We've been hired by Bolo to find oh, your friend. Oh, good Bolo. Great drinking buddy. Yes, Yolo has hired us to find your friend. Anything um, else we need? Anything you can think of, the smallest detail may help. Well, I'm pretty sure they kidnapped Floon only because they thought he was me. They kept shouting, grab Raynar, grab Raynar. Oh. And they grabbed him after I had escaped. Huh. So we guess for, for dressing so nicely. Um, but I didn't see them after they left the building. You might want to ask any sort of hobos or people living on Candle Lane, see if they know where they went. A uh, quick question. Floon was grabbed by Xanathar from the Xantarum? Correct. Okay. Do you... Okay, so they were clearly after after you in that case. The Xantarum were... Or Xanathar were. Mm-hmm. They weren't just hitting the, Zan- the Xantarum. They were actually trying to get you. Correct. Yeah, they're trying to get me because I think they also think I know where this rumor of a dragon horde is. Mm-hmm. And uh, you clearly don't, right? I know nothing Just... about it. Are you sure? Because it could help us find Floon. I I honestly know nothing. My father and I haven't spoken in years. I I think I I want to I want to roll to check that. What would that be? Perception to see if he's lying. Uh, insight. Insight. All right, I'm gonna roll for insight real quick. That is a 19. Is uh, he lying? You can tell he is telling the truth. You okay. have a very, very strong feeling. Got it. So he's lying. Okay. <laughs> Liar. <laughs> Liar. Okay. Um. I kind of just want to make sure we're not missing anything in this place, so I'm going to go up to the second floor. Gotcha. Well, I will bring you... Oh god, where did I put you? Is that is that another combat okay. encounter? <laughs> oh, I, the city guard's here, so I'm just going to run downstairs and say, help! <laughs> so you all die. Mm-hmm. How, how do we go? Are you going upstairs too, Karen? Sure. Yeah, bring and me up there. You want to go upstairs? Yeah, let's all go up. We're kind of done with. Let's all die together. Yeah, remember. Right, we'll tell them we'll be back in a second. Oh, also, can you? Is there a way to just like unhide the entire floor? Uh, not, not that you have to way. now, but just it kind of sucks having to use the vision cone to like explore when when yeah, we already I, know the space. Yeah, it should let you do it. I I just think I have the wrong option ticked right now. I'll, I'll figure it out. You, I think you can just disable Fog of War at a certain point. Yeah, but there's still stuff you guys haven't found. So. Can yeah. I search through some of the barrels and crates down here? See if there's any. Yeah. anything in them? Um, so you search through that. There's just a bunch of junk. Um, nothing of valuable. Nothing of value. Here. Has but, there... Uh, right. Have we found any, like... Uh, costumes that the Zentarum wear? Like, do uh, they have oh, a uniform? Like garb. Yeah. Uh, I would say all the stuff down on the first floor is all bloodied up and ripped and stuff. Mm-hmm. So you couldn't use any of that, but there might be in some of these other rooms. You're not sure. You haven't checked yeah. everything yet. I'm just kind of, look as I'm passing by crates, I'm just opening them up quickly to see if there's any uniforms or anything I could steal. Gotcha. Yeah, nothing, nothing out here. Okay. Oh, there is a door over here. Yeah. Check through there. 
Um, can I can I just roll an investigation for the space that was already visible to us to just to check for clues? Anything interesting? On the second floor? Yeah. In the space we have open. Not opening the door yet. Um, you don't see anything um, just in broad terms of looking around the rooms. There's nothing of value or uh, consequence or anything. Okay. All right. I'm good. All right. Uh, can I, I open this door? Yep. You can go through. Oh, and there's a tiny hallway with two more doors. Two more doors. Okay. Can I open this left door? Yeah. I'll open this top door. All right. Oh, what is this? A small office with cobwebs. And there's a tiny. Is this a room? Just outside. Here. And yeah. So these door. are the offices. Um, Can I there search is... the desk here? Yep. So if you search the office, you find a unused paper bird. What does it mean, unused? Oh, I think you know what it means. What is a paper I mean, bird? Uh, it's clearly some type of magic. Brain? A paper bird is a wondrous item, uncommon. After you write a message of 50 words or fewer in this magic sheet of parchment and speak a creature's name, the parchment magically folds into a tiny paper bird and flies to the recipient whose name you uttered. The recipient must be on the same plane of existence as you, otherwise the bird turns to ash as it takes flight. The bird is an object that has one hit point, an armor class of 13, a flying speed of 60, a dexterity of 16, and a score of 1 minus 5 and all other rooms. It wow. travels within 5 feet and is of its intended recipient by the most direct route, whereupon it turns into a non-magical and inanimate sheet of parchment that can be unfolded only by the intended recipient. If the bird's hit points or speed is reduced to zero, or if it is otherwise immobilized, it turns to ash. Paper birds usually come in small, flat boxes containing 1d6 plus 3 sheets of parchment. Huh. Alright, I'm just gonna... Um, that's interesting. I think we should take it. I, I, yes. I, I say, Lazarus, if you want to take it since you found it. Yes, I'll take it. Um, you, you see above each door Oops. are steel alarm bells with wires running back downstairs. Mm -hmm. And, uh, Josh, you find a, uh, what could pass as like Zentarum garb. Garb, like an insignia. Yeah, so they like that, it, I can wear like, proudly. Yeah. Okay. But you know, like, it will hold up to distance, but not scrutiny, because most Centaurum have either a tattoo or, like, like. I want to. I would just say heavily tattooed stuff. Like yeah, that. I'll just study the tattoos when we go downstairs as we're leaving yeah. on the dead bodies. So I can yeah, like, that. you could wear this and draw tattoos on and be okay, yeah. but if someone was, like, right up on you. Without the tattoos or anything? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Cool. Um, you guys, what, well, you want to search um, more? I mean, can we cut the alarm bells without activating them? Uh, yeah, you can. So I, I just want or, to be clear. The corpses downstairs are the Zentarum. We're assuming those are the Zentarum from the ambush. They're the guys who kidnapped. Yes. And then, and then they brought it back here, and then the and then Xanthar guys attacked them here. Okay. And then they're all Xanthar bodies down there. There's not a single Xanthar. Correct. Uh, okay. Um, so I guess we'll just open these doors to see what's behind them. Yeah, so this is... Uh, the, all the stuff I gave you is a broad search of all these offices. Oh, all of them. Okay. okay. Yeah. Mm. Well, we didn't find any correspondence or anything. No, no correspondence. Are Stuff there... is pretty heavily cobwebbed, so mm -hmm. you can tell, like, this is just mostly a storage area now. Like, people don't use these offices anymore. Are, are, is there any other location that we have missed in this building? Um, oh. I know I mean, that... At least obvious. No, obvious. Hide, hideouts like this normally have at least one secret stash somewhere. So we should take a look around and look yeah. for that. Wait, how, how is there an outside area if we were on the upper level? That's the street up there. Oh, 
Okay. Like it's yeah, I think yeah. these rocks on the left and right are like raised. These are different levels. Okay. Um yeah, I kinda wanna go to the first floor and look for like a hidden room or a trap door or anything. Oh, did you just do that, Will? Yeah. Which makes it easier. Yeah, that's a good idea. Okay, so I want to do I wanna check for We've got all these crates. I want to see if there's any scratch marks on the floor or anything like that that shows that these crates have been moved a lot. Or if there's areas of the floor that are less dusty than others, if that makes sense. I can't move my character. Um, you might be blocked by the doors. No, I'm down push. here. I can't move it at all. Uh, it's okay. Um, yeah, you don't need to play anymore. So, yeah. can I roll for that? Yes, you can roll for that. Are you talking was... about the upstairs crates or the downstairs crates? Um, I'd say all of it. All of it? Okay. Yeah, spending time. Either. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of doing the same thing, looking for more like hidden doors and things like that. Yeah, right. trap doors, so, things like that. Yeah, roll that for me. Well, what do you want us to roll? Uh, I'm uh, doing investigation. Yeah, investigation is fine. Or if your perception's higher, do that. I got an eight. Yeah, that's 16. Okay, so, Ian, you don't notice much, just crates and stuff like that. Uh, roll thick in this back corner up here, you notice uh, a bunch of, like, scratch marks around a flat stone. Uh, in this, on the first floor in the upper corner? Yeah, first floor, upper corner. Here, I'll uh, yeah, over here. Yeah, uh, I'll try to pry that stone up as if okay. I'm assuming that's where the scratch marks are from. Yeah, so as you lift it up, there's a sharp uh, electrical snap, and you can tell, you can see wires running from this trapdoor, and you can tell they were the wires that ran up to the alarm bells. Mm -hmm. uh, and you would cut them so there's no alarm going off. Mm -hmm. uh, and underneath is a little passageway to a, a little secret room. <gasps> What's the room? Ooh. Secret okay. tunnel. Can Ooh, maybe I crawl we should, into it? Maybe we should. I'm small. And we should try and stealth this. What are you guys doing? Can I crawl in because I'm small? If you want to, are you asking them or are you asking me? Yeah, I'm uh, asking if you them. Go, if you want to go first, too, more than more than. Yeah, uh, I'll go first. Yeah, I think it's just we go stealthy. I think we learned our lesson. Okay. Don't need any more so, blood today. Well, if this yeah. is like not just a yeah, room and this is like a tunnel to somewhere else, then we should probably just rest and then come back. But if it's just like a little hideout area. Yeah, see. so Lazary crawls through a little tunnel into a room. Um, there are two wooden crates here. Uh, inside one of them are four wood framed paintings wrapped in leather. The paintings depict the cities of Luscan, Neverwinter, Silvery Moon, and Baldur's Gate, and they are worth, you think, around 75 gold pieces each. Ooh. And the second crate is stolen from a caravan in the high road. It contains 15 10 pound silver trade bars, uh, all black from corrosion, but still worth about 50 gold pieces each. And how many of those were there? 15? Uh, there were uh, 15, 10, yeah, 15. And what was it? 50 gold pieces each? Yes. Oh, boy. Oh, boys, we hit the jackpot. Ah, right. we should, uh, let's pull this loot out. Yeah, let's, let's try to hide this stealthily before the, uh, the, cat, the watch sees. Maybe we All just... right, we can each take five silver bars. Yep, that works. Well, we're not going to be able to sneak the paintings out, right? No, well... Well, the watch is a door down right at there. the warehouse door. Yeah, there's another door right there. We could just kind of leave. Okay. But we want to talk to the other guy first before we do. Upstairs and leave to the street level. Um, I have a backpack. I can hold one cubic foot or 30 pounds here. Oh, well, I'm just I thinking... Two, I have two backpacks, actually. 
I'm just thinking maybe we just leave it, leave some of this stuff here for now and talk to the city watch, and then once they're gone, we can come back and get this stuff. Yeah, or we can just talk to them and then just leave with it out the side door, because they're not, like, all over the place. Yeah. Yeah, they're only at the big warehouse door. That's where yeah. all the city watch. Yeah, okay. let's, we, we can exit through the side door. Okay, yeah, so let's we'll talk to them first. So I'm going to go up to the uh, the chief, the inspector investigator, whatever he is, and say, and just, like, give him a rundown of what we found upstairs, which was pretty much not much. But then I'm also going to tell him about Raynar and what Raynar told us. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, you must doing. be the uh, the men my uh, my uh, lieutenant untied. Yes. I'm Hyastus Staggett, captain of the City Watch. Hyastus, pleasure to meet you. Well, I'm not normally an investigator myself, but I guess I got dragged into this for want of coin, I suppose. So, what do you think? I, I'm pretty sure Reynar's telling the truth, I guess. We'll go find these Xanthar fellows and see what they know about this kidnapping they're accused of. Yeah, it seems uh, most of these dead men are Xantarim, but we did find one Xanathar guild guy. Uh, seemed to have been dressed up like them. Uh, oh. We think he's the one who let the guys in. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, but, yeah, these, these Zentarim versus Xanthar, it's been happening a lot in the city, but, you know, I'm kind of keeping a blind eye because I'm kind of doing my job for them. And uh, this building, who owns this building? Uh, this is the Zentarim territory, as far as I know. Oh, okay. Which is why they brought those two boys back here, but Raynar tells me that they still got one of them, the Xanthars. Xanathars. Mm -hmm. Oh, they... Oh, yes. No, oh, I'm sorry. You're saying they took one Zentarum and they took Floon? No, they just took Floon. Oh, okay. Yes. Interesting. Where, where are these Xanathars? Where do they hang out? Where's the stomping grounds? Uh, you know, all sorts of places. Most people say they're in the sewers. But hey, you're not looking to go after them, are you? Well, you just told us yourself you're not going to do the job and somebody's yeah, got to do it. Go around breaking the law in my city. You know We're the laws around the here, law? right? Is it? We're, We're just to, asking questions. Trying to unbreak the laws that have been broken. Yeah. No, no offense. Keep the blood off the streets. You know what I'm saying? Ah, uh, yes, of course. Keep it in the sewers. Yeah. Well, uh, that's all I got here today. We're kind of wrapping up here. We, uh, you know, job's half done, so we're done. Understood. Understood. Thank you, Chief, and uh, let us know. If there's anything we yeah. can do for you, and we'll try to keep you apprised of our investigation as well. We're just yeah. amateur detectives here, but, uh, you know, the coin's good, so we're working hard. I didn't understand anything you said, but I'm smiling and backing away. Oh, yes, we better. <laughs> oh, does she know? <laughs> um, okay, so the City Watch leaves. Uh, they kind of piled all the bodies up mm -hmm. and burned them because nobody's um, going to want to bury for... them this time. Before they do that, I just want to study the Xanathar body. Uh, yeah, so you don't know anything stand out about him. You actually had trouble even figuring out who wasn't uh, mm -hmm. the Xantarum. It's mostly because he doesn't have Xantarum tattoos on him, yep. but he also doesn't have anything defining. Uh, so, like, there's no insignia. Like, how did they know he was uh, Xanathar? Uh, the, I would just... They only knew just because he wasn't a Xantarum, so they assumed he must be some sort of Xantar, Xan he, Xanathar spy. And he didn't have anything on him? No, he didn't have anything on him. Okay. But yeah, his tattoos were like wax, black, black wax. Mm -hmm. Um, so my, my proposal is, I know we've been streaming for almost three hours now, so I was thinking uh, we s just hawk the stuff that we found real quick, just turn it into gold. Um, go to the tavern and pay for a long rest and call it for today. Does that sound great? Oh, well, yeah. Tree, Troll's got, Tree Troll's got a good idea. Light the place on fire and run out with the paintings. If stopped, say you were trying to save them. That's actually not a bad idea. <laughs> That's a very good idea. <laughs> yeah, whatever you guys want to do. Okay, so yeah, can, can we just sell the paintings? Yeah, I mean, uh, paintings yeah. on the solar. Paintings. Painting sold. Okay, yep. so let me let me just do all this. Uh, so that is fifteen times fifty, which is seven hundred and fifty gold, plus the four paintings of seventy five gold each, which is a thousand fifty gold, which is gonna be what is that, three hundred and fifty gold per person? Yep. 
Okay, so let me just yeah. add that. Woo! You said a thousand fifty or a thousand one hundred fifty? A thousand fifty, right? Because it's fifteen times five is seven fifty plus three hundred. Yes, thousand fifty divided 350, by three is three fifty. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Nice. Nice, nice. Did it. Okay. We're tired now. And then mm -hmm. I think we just go back to uh, Dar Darwin. Darwin. You know, honestly, my, uh, there's something about D and D where the names are just so wonky and they just throw them at you bring, so fast. It's hard. Yeah, to we'll bring Darwin or we'll bring Durin. The uh, son's son's oh, name. Sorry. Raynar. Raynar. We should pick up Raynar and bring him back to Volo, at least. Yes. Yeah. Maybe you we should bring be him safe. back. Yeah, let's bring it back to the tavern. Let's have that quick convo with Volo, if we can. Assuming he's at the tavern. Is that okay, yeah. Will? We'll assume like... Yeah, the, that's fine. We can assume like the yawning the tavern is like our home base at this point. Yeah. So we bring in Raynar, and we say... We say, Volo, quick update. Ah, oh, did you find Floon? We have not, but he's been kidnapped by the Xanthar, according to Raynar. Raynar. They were drinking heavily, and they were ambushed and uh, attacked. And long story short, the Xanathar, they believe they have Raynar, but really they have Floon. But uh, just, ah. a, just a quick update. We've got nice lead going, and I uh, just wanted to keep you apprised for the investigation. Thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, uh, feel free to rest. Uh, another night on my tab is fine with me. But I guess you're on... Uh, Sternin's tab anyways for saving that uh, him from the troll. Yeah. Much obliged to you both. Uh, Raynar and I have much to discuss now, so uh, if you'll uh, lead us to it, I'll let you guys rest. Great fun, great fun. Yes, thank you. Good night. Night. All right. Good night. All right. Is that a good session break? It feels like it. Yeah, that's a good session yeah. break. Yeah, yeah. You, there's another like area before the chapter ends, which would be another hour. So. Mm -hmm. So let me um, let me switch over to the camera. Let's let's do a quick a quick around the horn. How are we feeling, Josh? You go ahead first. How are you feeling about the campaign? How are you feeling about the story? How are you doing? Uh, I'm really excited about it, honestly. Um, I'm enjoying the amount of like non-combat interaction yeah. we're having, mm -hmm. um, and I'm just looking forward to figuring out how to deal with different situations in the future with our characters. Yep. Yeah. Uh, how about you, uh, Karen? Yeah, I like this uh, scenario. It is uh, uh, much like Josh said. I like that it's not so much combat focused, and that um, you know any combat is significant to the plot. Um, yeah, I have a good feeling about this. Yeah, yeah, I feel the same. I feel like this is the first time I've played extensively, like like a thoroughly written campaign like pre-made by Wizards of the Coast. And you can definitely feel it. There's a lot of story going on, a lot of set pieces. Feels like they've really brought a lot of life to the city and given you a lot of avenues other than just straight combat encounters or just straight rolling for random encounters. Will, from the DM's perspective, how's it going? It's going pretty good. I, I got a, like a lot of my setup this time was marred by figuring out stuff for Foundry. And now that I know most of it, I can easily... Uh, like I can run those encounters a lot faster because I don't have to manually roll stuff. Mm -hmm. um, like the Kenku, they weren't in anything, so I had to make them from scratch. I didn't have time to do it, so I had to manually write everything. And uh, But at least setting up all the set pieces, I think will run more smoothly next time. And uh, yeah, so we are almost... Uh, you you guys heading out to the next area and then it'll be the end of the chapter. So next time we'll probably do maybe a chapter, another it chapter ish. We might get through two. who knows, but yeah, cause things I, are coming. Yeah. Cause I, I think it, it was probably what 30 minutes before we actually got going. So I think we had a solid two and a half hours yeah. of gameplay and we could probably turn that be able down to run even it more. a lot faster. Yeah. And, and we can, we can play a lot faster as well now that we're familiar with the system. Um, are we staying level one? Any level ups we need to know about yet? Um, no, no level ups yet, but yeah, actually, so you, at the end of the chapter, you, you will hit two. Mm -hmm. Um, so maybe keep that in mind, maybe press like, your level two. So we can easily so do we don't it. don't have to take time during, uh, 
How much longer do we have in this Bring chapter? Uh, there's just another area you have to go to and okay. fight things. Okay, uh, feeling pretty great. Thanks again, guys, for joining. Let's go around the horn one more time just to let us know where people can find you. I'm Ian Gibson. You can find me on Twitter at Think Gibson. Josh, where can people find you? Uh, I'm Josh Kempton. Uh, you can find me here, nowhere else. And <laughs> uh, Karen, where can people find you? Uh, you can also find me here, nowhere else. I mean, you can find me elsewhere, but probably just here. Yeah, that's gross. That's, ugh, ugh. Uh, <laughs> Will, where can people find you? Uh, you can find me here. And you can also find me on Twitter at Hunt270. <laughs> that was fun. That was very we fun. We need mead next yes. time. Lots yes, mead. absolutely. And you can find us at subpixelfilms.com. That takes you right to our YouTube page. We've got a lot of stream archives as well as lot as as well as edited feature content, including several uh, short documentaries, twenty to thirty minutes in length. A lot of great stuff there. You can also find us on Twitch, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter under the handle at subpixel team. Uh, we'll talk about it a little bit more offline. I know we talked a, a little bit about it during the stream. Not sure when the next session is going to be, but I'm aiming for two to three weeks from now. But we'll figure it out. Uh, we'll definitely let you know. The best way to find out is follow us on Twitter. That's where we post all of our upcoming streams, at least you know a couple hours in advance. Um, and even if you miss it, you know what? We've got the archive on YouTube. Thank you guys yeah. so much for joining us. Thank you guys for watching. It's been a great time. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.